Today's guest is undefeated in the MMA fighting. He is a -a one-of-a-kind type of sensation. Uh, He's here with his coach, Tim Welch, who you'll also hear on the mic in the back. Uh, it's, it's exciting to sit down with him. The sugar show himself, Mr. Sean O'Malley. Yeah, but it started for us as having, uh, you know, I was a big Dustin Poirier fan. I still am a mm-hmm. big Dustin Poirier yeah, fan. Yeah. And so he, like, he was like the first, like, dream guest that we ever had. I was like, dude, what if we could get Dustin Poirier on? And, like, so then when t- eventually he came in. And so then that's how I slowly even started getting into um, UFC. And then Rogan knew I was a fan. And so he took me to when Dustin and Max Holloway fought. That fight was sick. That was a crazy You were there live? Night. Yeah, bro. It was that the was first, your first fight I'd ever one? been to. Yeah. Who was the co-main? Do you remember? Uh, Israel and Gastelum. Oh. <laughs> Which was crazy. That, probably, that might be one of the sickest fights ever. But Dustin versus Max might be up there too. Oh, it was crazy, man. Crazy night. And I was like, bro, I don't even like, I don't even know what happened to me. I turned, like something came out of me. Oh. I think this inner part of me that always had been like afraid to fight just like mm-hmm. came out of me as like a fan. And so then slowly I've like, really started to get into the sport more it's, you cool, know? it's a fucking crazy sport dude i used to be afraid it. to watch it dude i literally told on my dad because my mom was watching or my i told on my dad told my mom because my dad was watching i was probably 13 14 and oh, I like it was to, a bad thing i'm like wow, i thought it was fucked up yeah i'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. how do they take those sh- shots to the ribs you're like, mom, dad, look what dad's doing. So I'm like, dad's watching. Because I wanted to watch something. And I was like literally disgusted by it. They're bleeding and stuff. And I'm just like this skinny little fucking kid. <laughs> never thought about fighting at all. Were you, um, what do your parents do? Are we going? Yeah. Oh, fuck We're yeah. We're good. Cool. What, do your, uh, what do your parents do? My mom, she, she's retired basically now, but she was a nurse. Um, and my dad was a detective. No. So I, growing up, was terrified of marijuana. And we lived in Helena, Montana, tiny fucking place. Yeah. And so if anybody was smoking weed, I looked at it like they were doing meth in my head. Right. Like I was like associating it with the same, same stuff. Yeah, like um, plant. Like, so, yeah. so that my dad was a tech, I, I obviously fucking love marijuana now, but it, it was crazy because I just looked at it so bad. And then when I moved to Phoenix, I kind of like Tim's like, come on, try it, try it. So I tried it. I'm like, oh, your coach, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what the? Yeah, f- yeah, yeah. yeah, my coach. Coach you into a <laughs> Hey, let me coach you into a bag right yeah. here. <laughs> but it was because he, he thought it would be good for me because I'm a fucking spaz. It'd be oh, wow. 10, 10 p.m. We trained twice, five hours. And I'm just like, let's go do something. He's like, shut the fuck up. Take a hit. And I would just take him. Like, Whoa, that's pretty nice. Be able to chill for a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, my, my dad's a, a detective. He's retired now too. He does something. I'm not even sure what the fuck he does now, but. Does did something. he ever do any murders and stuff like that even? He, he did. Yeah, he did. He was in the, for about 20, I think 20 years. And he, he told me some fucked up stories. With I love like murder, bro. Murdered. Uh, like this guy got, he was in a helicopter he, and my dad was like first on the scene. He like completely was splattered all over the, the dash of the helicopter because it ran into a mountain or some shit. But he would tell me some fucked up shit about, like, him having to interview guys that were raping their daughters that were in wheelchairs. Oh, oh. And that's the shit that he was like, I fucking hate this job. That's too much. That's too much. And then, and that wasn't just, like, one time. That was, like, numerous times, certain situ like. Just having to oh face God. the devil like that. Yeah. Because you're looking right at that. When you're talking to somebody like that, you're looking at the devil. Yeah, sitting there having those conversations, and then you, and then think like after that conversation later that day, you're probably running it through your mind and thinking about like, what the fuck? There's people like this. Yeah, it's sad. Ooh, and you see, so your mom was a nurse. That's a really loving job. I feel like you have to be. It yeah. takes a special type of person to be a nurse. Yeah, she was. She was super like caring and loving toward growing up. Uh, we had I have three. There was three boys and then my sister. So yeah, it was. She, she was super caring and loving she still is she still treats me like i'm fucking six yeah it's because the other day like she still sees me in a certain way which is really weird because i moved to phoenix about six years ago and um 
she still looks at me as like I'm a, that little sh- I'm her Shawnee. I'm yeah. her little boy because she I told her don't watch any of my podcasts, don't watch any of my <laughs> vlogs. And she watched our last vlog, Road to UFC 250. It was like we put it out. Um, it was before I got the call to fight Eddie and all that. In the beginning episode, is Tim was pretending to stand up and give fifty thousand dollars stimulus check to everybody, and I went die, motherfucker. And my mom watched the beginning of that. She called me crying. She's like, I didn't raise you like that. That's evil inside of you. And I'm, I'm like, reading the comments, and everyone's like, oh, sugar and Tim, fucking love you guys. I'm like, this her perspective of that. Like, she just sees it so much different. She just still sees me as that little boy. Right. I'm like, this is just comedy. That's just funny stuff. Right. Like, they don't know. Yeah. They don't know sometimes, like, uh, yeah, like things that we're joking around about. Yeah. They don't, like, they'll think it's super serious. I like to think, like, c- comedy's fun because you can push the buttons and make things jokes about stuff that you can't necessarily you shouldn't almost yeah well that's the I'm funnest not, part dude i'm obviously not a comedian but when tim and i and jx are hang, mm. <laughs> hanging out we say some fucked up shit that's like well sugar's funny. in the fat chicks if you didn't know. I, i'm is not he, into fat I, I don't mind a little thickness <laughs> you but. gotta have a thing especially with the look with the end of times coming dude i don't be laying there next to a bone bag dog <laughs> dude true. you laying next to some girl uh, that doesn't dude. have any skills no. bro yeah that's, that's the true. last that's thing i want mm. the end of times coming bro and you have to freaking yeah. hunt for two no shit uh-huh. might as well get one and two for yeah. sure yeah. we're trying to fucking see if there's any way we can score some chicks down here in la I'm sure. <laughs> Bro, I've definitely, I've disappointed a lot of women in this town. No. I'm sure we can help. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm down to disappoint someone tonight. Yeah. Like, Even if we got to pay 150 bucks. That's what I'm saying. Like, if it comes down to it, it's like, okay, this chick two hundred for an hour, not to fuck, of course. Right. It's yeah. just a little massage yeah. hang or out. something. I would hang out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bucks. you could find somebody definitely to hang out for sure, man. <laughs> Especially during these times. Yeah, they're you know, desperate. It's extra they're to desperate. have the mask off, though. That's the only yeah. thing. I might keep going on just in case. Yeah, it's 50. It's I know that it's, I'm not joking. For a lot of women, it's $50 more Without for a, no mask. Wow. So that's where we're at here. Yeah. Um, When you look at, like, I was listening to one of your interviews with uh with Ariel, mm-hmm. Ariel Helwani, and... uh. You talked about instead of you. You said performing and in, in, instead of fighting, just in a in a sentence you were using. Mm-hmm. Do you think of it as performing? Do you think of it as like? I do. I think of it as pure entertainment. Um, I've never thought of fighting. It, it, I've never been able to like articulate it. How to say it? I've never thought of fighting as fighting. I've always thought of it as a, a sport plus entertainment. Um, and I'm just gonna get really good at this skill, which happens to be fighting, punching, kicking, choking, all the skills, and, and then go and perform. And all, and I always in my head have better skill set than this guy, so it's like a performance um, for me. But it's still fighting. It's hard. It's hard to explain it. But yeah, I feel oh like yeah, I'm performing. Oh, I can imagine it's hard. Yeah, but yeah, because I'm watching some of your fights, and I'm like, yeah, it seems like. Like some guys, you're watching them fight, and it's it's a fight. Yours has this different element where it's like, like I would watch you sometimes. It seems like whenever you get in the clinch, like it's almost like it bothers you a little because, and this is just my perspective, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because it's like, oh, this almost feels looks tacky. Like I want to do the, like it doesn't. You can't be as artistic right. when you're in some of those environments. Does it feel like that, or is that? Um, it, 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 that comes to, down to strategy. For me, I'm I'm usually like longer almost every single time I fight someone especially in my weight class I'm gonna be longer I'm gonna have the reach advantage um so getting in close and being in the clinch is gonna be not necessarily a disadvantage for me but it's not necessarily where I want to be I want to be at range right where I can hit people and they can't hit me if I'm teeping somebody which is like a front kick to their sternum if I'm landing that they can't hit me yeah. and you if you watch my fights I throw a lot of fucking teeth kicks. Oh, your legs like seem like they got arms in yeah, them, dude. I'm like, I dude, does he have mo- fucking arms in his legs? I throw them just as much as my hands. Yeah, like, yeah. I throw just many kicks. So once we're in the clinch, it gives them an opportunity to grab my hips, get a body lock, take me down. Um, but we've been working on so much jujitsu, and I and I'm getting called out by these wrestlers, and and I don't use I don't read comments and get offended. They're like, oh, you need to fucking fight a wrestler to prove you're real. But I do a lot of jujitsu, a lot of ground training. I do way more grappling than I do anything. So I'm going to fucking choke these motherfuckers. Like, once I get someone that can actually take me down, like, 
I guarantee Jose, the kid I fought before Eddie, his goal, his jujitsu tattooed across his chest. His goal was to yeah, take yeah, that, me down. That means he means. He was yeah. trying to take me down. Yeah, dude. But, if you write it on your chest. Exactly. Dude. Forever, you better really mean it, dude. But the dude. thing is, is like, these guys think, oh, they're just, we got to take him down, grab him. Good luck grabbing a hold of me. My distance and my footwork and my speed is, you know, that's something we work on and understanding where I'm at on the cage. It's not easy to take me down. It's not easy to grab right. me without getting fucking punched in the jaw or need or hit in the stomach. So, so these people that think that the way to beat me is, hey, let's just take him down. Right. That's not a good game plan. Right. And it's because it's not easy. Yeah, you're like a dangerous water, man. When I'm watching you out there, I'm like, damn, this guy, it's almost like um, somebody, like you have a puppeteer almost, and the person who's doing it is like definitely been on some speed balls. Dude, like they've been up for a couple of days, you yeah, know? <laughs> that's like, how I, f I feel like. When I'm in there, and I've said this in other interviews, like I feel like I just let go of all thought and everything, and I feel like my higher self takes control of me in there. So I do. I am like a fucking puppet to my higher self, and just doing everything that I'm just doing whatever that puppet's making me do. That's probably. What do you it feel is. coachable? Like, uh, do you feel? Is it? Do you find it's harder to be, like, take like pointers from coaches and stuff as you grow because i mean you're like on a you're literally on like a rocket ship right now like this is a unique time in your life does it get because your own voice gets big you know because yeah. people tell you it's big right. you see your 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 work and it's a you know you're you're undefeated you're like okay i know what i'm doing and does that make it tough to to hear coaches as much not at all because like tanquino augusto mendez is our jujitsu coach who that's who tim got his black belt under and he's just won 80 cc worlds last year which is the biggest grappling tournament and he's the best in that weight class, which is my weight class, at grappling. I'm never going to outlearn him. There's uh, there's never going to be a time where I'm like, I don't, he can always teach me forever. Uh. And then for MMA, it's like Tim and I, Tim knows my style, my striking, my jujitsu better than anyone. He knows it like as well as I know it. So I trust when he says something, like you can see there's new, I've watched all my fights fucking thousands of times. <laughs> there's moments in the fight where you can hear Tim yell something from the cage and you can see you'll see me do it the same what he's yelling in because we have code words for everything um so in the fight i'm de i'm super coachable i'm super i'm trusting in him like he sees something and i know i, tr I trust that that's going to work in there and it, and it has so far but as far as being outside the fight and like okay it's time to train i mean you could answer that if i'm coachable i feel like i, I take take it well yeah but super fucking smart you know and i don't look at it and say hey you need to do this say hey look at it from this perspective what do you think and he's like oh shit that makes sense now i see that a little bit so it's, he's super fucking coachable for sure yeah what was it like whenever you guys went over to joe rogan i know you're a huge joe rogan fan yeah. you me too uh and i remember the first time walking into like his lair it's yeah. like i feel like I, for me i felt like i walked into like like where they wrote the Bible and like, <laughs> but the Bible had like some crazy different chapters. Yeah. Like people were, you know, people were fucking arm wrestling and yeah. people were, uh, you know, eating fucking albatross nuggets and just doing wild <laughs> shit, you know? Yeah, that's what, how, that's how it felt. What was y'all's experience like when you guys went over there? I was nervous as fuck. Me too, man. I'm like, whew. And the night before I got this Airbnb and I didn't look at it. I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> two miles from Rogan's place. I figured it would be a nice little place. It's some ghetto ass apartment studio, one, <laughs> studio, one bedroom, one bed. <laughs> one bed, and it's like so. Tim and I are fucking sleeping in that bed, and I'm like under the top covers. And he's, like, it's a uncomfortable, just I'm greasy, just greasy. And the uh, picture, uh, <laughs> the pictures of the apartment were of the like the lady and her family that lived in there, and it was just uh, fucking awkward. It wasn't awkward, but it was it was like weird to be in there because it didn't feel clean. Yeah. Um. Yep. But and then we so we got caffeined up and went into Rogan's, and uh, I was fucking nervous. I'm like. I know his podcasts are long, three hours. He's fucking super smart. I feel like half retarded half the time. Yeah, like, especially me too. around you know. I'm like God, but I felt like it got it went good. Yeah, at hour two, I feel completely. I feel like one of those people that got molested in the wheelchair. <laughs> honestly, bro, no <laughs> offense, but like I feel <laughs> at oh, hour man. two, I don't know how uh, he keeps going, man. Yeah. It's impressive, and he never has to get up and pee. I, I think I, I don't remember if I got up and peed, but I'm, I remember having to pee. But he always just fucking toughs it out. Yeah, I get afraid to pee in there. Like I was like, yeah, I was. Can I pee or, yeah. yeah, I was nervous. Like, what do I do? Just drink it? Like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> just, what, yeah. <laughs> What's supposed to be? Yeah. What, what would Joe Rogan do? Yeah, Rogan's the fucking man. It's crazy how 
how uh, influential he is nowadays too. It's yeah. sweet though. Like all the guests he have on there, you can have funny ass motherfuckers on there or really, really smart motherfuckers on there or high level athletes and he can relate with all of them and talk and have a good conversation. It's smart, smart motherfucker. It's sweet that we are able to listen to him like that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, he's so curious. It's like um, at a time, it's funny, at a time where, uh, where people kind of hurry to make choices and decisions and hurry through everything. Mm -hmm. It feels like uh, he goes long form and he's so curious. Like he genuinely like wants to know stuff. Yeah. And I think it helps the rest of us, you know, learn. Yeah, for sure. I've learned a, f a ton listening to his podcast for the, over the years. Yeah. Even like, like the, I've never, I don't know what the fuck, I don't know about politics. I don't know what a Republican, I don't know what a Democrat, <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah. far, I don't know far. The only politics I ever fucking ever heard of is from, you know, Rogan's. Yeah, it's pretty interesting listening to their perspectives on that. Yeah, when he had Bernie Sanders on, I thought it was real interesting because I didn't know exactly like, I mean, you hear all these like little clips online and stuff, but to get like a real idea of sitting down and listening to somebody, yeah. it just, you get to know them a little better, right. you know? For I sure. Thought, I thought it was a lot more real. Yeah, for sure. I think that's how most of those talks should go, like the important ones. Yeah. Long conversations like that instead of like they say, 30 seconds yeah. commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. fucking crazy. <laughs> Do, um, when you see this picture yourself, like we had a picture of you when you were up on Rogan, that was like two years ago. Yeah. Is that interesting to look back at that guy? Does it just seem like the same dude? Yeah, I feel like for me, you should always look, a couple of years is a long time to be able to grow mentally. Um, and I feel like I learned, because that was right after my fight where I broke my foot. Right. So I was... I was learning a lot at that time. I was kind of, I was on that, I was on that fucking rocket ship that I'm on now. I was blowing up. I won, uh, I, I won my debut. I just won, won my second fight in the UFC. I broke my foot, got a lot of attention because I fought with a broken foot for three minutes, ended up winning. Um, and I don't think. And your suspension came after that? Yeah. Right. Right after? Yeah. July. Fuck. I don't remember that. All that time feels like it was so. Um, yeah, I think I got suspended after that, which was in the, another two years at, out, and it was just fucking crazy. That whole, that whole, from the time I broke my foot until that last fight against Jose was it was over, a little over two years, and it was just so much. I went through two surgeries, was was on the Rogan, went through two suspensions. Um, it, yeah, that was a long two years, but I feel like. I learned so much about about myself, um, and I'm just like way more grateful for what I had going through all that stuff. Yeah, I could imagine that sitting out and watching everything go on, and just thinking, okay, where would I be in this? Would I be in this fight right here? Like, yeah, was there a fighter during that time? You're like, oh, that guy's taking my place. Well, I was supposed to fight. I was supposed to fight El Teco, the kid I knocked out um, on March seventh. I was supposed to fight him. Got suspended. And then my suspension was up, and then I was supposed to fight Cheeto, and then I got suspended again, so I was like, fuck, watching these guys fight, and I'm like, I'm supposed to be fighting these guys, but I did, I, like I said, I got those two surgeries, which made me way more of an athlete, like I felt like I needed those, I had a torn labrum in my hip on both my UFC fights, the, both my first and second UFC fight, I had the torn labrum, so it was, it was affecting my performance a lot, so I was able to get healthy. Um, and I was able to do a lot of jujitsu, like really commit my entire life to jujitsu and getting good where I was lacking. Like that's where someone was going to beat me two years ago is if they took me down and they could lay on me. Now I don't feel like someone could do that. Yeah. So I, looking back at it, it was the best thing that happened. I was able to really commit to jujitsu and get a strength and conditioning program. Um, the fight against Andre, I was walking around 149 pry, like heaviest 149. Mm -hmm. The fight against El Teco, I was walking around 157, 158. So I was able wow. to put on a lot of muscle that was like fucking not just muscle to where I'm like, God, I'm jacked, but muscle in the, all the right places. My legs, my everything was, we were, we were training, lifting for MMA. Brandon right. Harris, my strength and conditioning coach, is a fucking man. We like we were lifting for MMA, so it was perfect. Do you feel? Is there a weight that you really feel the best at? Do you feel like you're still learning it? Because I mean, even at your age, you're still kind of your body's still kind of adjusting. I mean, yeah. I'm 40, I'm older, so it's like I, you know, I know that my body kind of goes through some things mm -hmm. where you know sometimes it feels like oh it's pretty hype, and sometimes it feels like oh okay, I'm still kind of figuring it out. Yeah, I hired this guy named Dan Garner. He's a nutritionist. We we I. 
um, got my shit tested, my piss tested, my saliva tested. Jeeps. Um, got everything tested and figured out what causes inflammation. Would you figure out you're fucking high as fuck? <laughs> no, I had to fucking that. shit in this little container and ship it really? off. I'm like, it was weird. Yeah, but I got all that stuff tested so I can figure out what causes inflammation in my body and what, what foods do really well. Oh, wow. So I got my diet dialed the fuck in, like perfect. I'm eating perfect in camp and I'm feeling like a fucking machine. Um, it, it's crazy when you eat perfect those little injuries that you have in your wrist or your knee or your back's tight, those little injuries go away. They're not there anymore. There's no more inflammation in my body because I'm eating the right food. So with the, my food on point, like my diet's fucking perfect. My what my weight cut was good. Um, the strength and conditioning and then my, my MMA training, I'm like, I, I'm everything's at such a high level as far as my coaches mm-hmm. that I'm just destined to be fucking great with everyone around me. Right. Being you got so the perfect package right yeah. now. Do you feel... um? Do you feel like, I know you just got off of a fight, do you, and I heard you talking about like, um, you know, you don't have a manager, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and I don't have a manager, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's one way that I've just done my own business Mm -hmm. and there's things that I like about it. There's moments where I get scared where it's kind of like, okay, what do I do in this instance a little bit? Like this is where I would have an extra layer of protection to talk to someone, I don't Mm -hmm. have to make those calls and stuff. What's that experience kind of been like for you not having one? Yeah, for me, I was like, I think a lot of fighters are fooled. I'm like, you guys can't do this. You guys are, some fighters give 20% of their purse. They make $100,000. They're giving $20,000 yeah, to their manager. Yeah. You know, mine was only 10%. Right. But still, I'm like, I'm going to give 10% of my manager because he signed a couple emails. It feels and, weird, and doesn't it? And he negotiated my contract with the UFC when I was the one that was sitting there talking to the UFC. And he was sitting next to me, didn't say shit, didn't say a word. And I'm sitting there talking. So I had to pay him, you know, a lot of money to get out of the contract, but it was worth it. And in as far as dealing with those things, you know, my dad's helped me out a lot. Nice. I have a lawyer to look over contracts. That's perfect, yeah. Um, and then I have I have other people that I can hit up if I need to that are in the industry to you ask, can ask questions. Them, yeah. So yeah, I, that's a big thing. It's is how huge. do I get through this moment? Like, what would you do here? Exactly. So that's that's nice. And just not burning bridges anywhere. Just always having good relationships with so, so many people to, to be able to ask is nice. But, you know, I'm getting messages from other fighters. Like, hey, you don't have a manager? What's going on? I'm like, dude, if you can sit down. Like, I sat down with UFC, Sean Shelby, and mm-hmm. we talked. He's like, I there's some fighters I can't talk to. I have to have that middle person. Because if I tell them, hey, you're not worth this, this right. is why, and they get, no, I am. It, it, I'm like, okay, I want me and you to sit down and be fair. Talk to me like I'm, I'm my own manager. Don't talk to me like I'm the fighter. Right. And let's be fucking fair. I don't see why that's so hard, but I know they're trying to pay me the least amount of money to right. go out there and fight, and I'm trying to make myself the most amount of money. Let's meet in the middle and be fucking fair. And yeah. I think we're getting there. Um, I sat down with the UFC after my last fight. We didn't have a written out contract in numbers, but... We agreed, like, okay, this this should be fair. So it's it's getting done, and, and it feels good to be like n- knowing I'm I'm in charge of this shit. So it feels who, good. Who are guys that you can reach out to? Do you feel like like are there guys out there if you need suggestions as for negotiating the contract? Yeah, or just yeah that kind of stuff. Like, are, do you have kind of mentors within the business? You feel like I feel like um um for for managing sponsorship contracts I, I have a couple people that i'm working with right now without signing a contract with them just so i can ask them they can help me get contract but when it comes to just fight i feel like i haven't had to reach out to anybody but if i did i feel like i could reach out to a couple people and even if they're like nah I'm, i can't help you like even chael son and like this mother- motherfucker knows a lot of shit i have his number i've texted him a couple times if i was like i don't know what to do maybe i'll ask chael yeah that motherfucker knows a lot uh, I haven't re- reached out to him personally for anything really yet, and if I have to someday, maybe I will. But even Anthony Smith's in the UFC, he's a he, yeah, he's he, a great guy. He mess Anthony's or I was awesome. on the phone with him doing a podcast, doing their podcast. He said, "Hey, if you ever need anything or have any questions, reach out. Let me know." Guys like that, and then obviously I have a bunch of friends in the UFC. But I feel like I'm I'm doing good right now, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm taking care of what needs to be taken care of. And if I'm happy with my contract, right, that's a big thing. Yeah, you know if you're happy or not. Yeah, yeah. So I think. Uh, and so far, um, it's going good. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. What uh, what have you been doing in your downtime? Like, say you get off of a fight. Like, you know, you got maybe. Do you guys take a week off? What does that look like, dude? You guys go to the water could, slide or something? You guys do a, water slides? If I could take a week off, that'd be crazy. My I fucking enjoy training so much. It's part of 
it's just part of life. Like I fucking love it. Um, w- w- a water slide sounds pretty fun. No, but I, I don't know. <laughs> it training's just part of life, and I enjoy I enjoy it so much. We train. Um, you know, when I'm in camp, I don't smoke, so I enjoy smoking outside uh, of camp. Whether I'm like last Sunday was pro, I got high as shit. Yeah. Rolled in. Have you ever rolled gi in jujitsu? Uh, like in the that butter, you mean? Gi. <laughs> No, in a gi like the looking pajamas. Oh looking yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I I got high as shit. I took a puff off this sativa joint Sunday, and we did flow. Uh, I flowed for the most part. My shins fucking bruised as shit, and it hurts to even touch. But I did jujitsu. That's probably the most fun practice I've ever had in my life. Just flowing in a gi, going from positions to positions, and uh, I just really enjoy training jujitsu. Yeah. Um, I enjoy hitting mitts and stuff, but we, we we usually hit mitts and really up the striking in camp when we have a fight booked and sparring. I don't really I don't spar outside of outside of camp. Just pretty much do jujitsu and, and strength and conditioning. But what's your like finishing move? Do you have like a finishing? Oh, move? I got a fuck ton. I have more finishing techniques mm-hmm. than anybody ever because I can stand both stances and do everything from both stances, and I have I have just as much power in my left hand as my right hand, and my like everything's just. The sugar show, man. Dude, it's fucking I, sweet. It is. It's fucking sweet. And I've had I've had a lot of sweet finishes. I don't know if you've seen the one where I head kicked that dude. Yeah. That one that one's one of my all time favorite. That's what I was really looking for. I thought I was gonna catch Eddie with that. Um because his hands were so low. I thought I was gonna catch him with something spinning, but Yeah, he kinda yeah. fights like he's from almost like the eighteen hundreds or something. You know, he comes in like he just got off a shit. Yeah. yeah. He he was the nicest motherfucker too. I l- legitimately felt bad knocking wow. him out as he was fluttering down. I yeah. Was like, ah. Yeah, does that happen sometimes? Is there times where you get in there and because sometimes, like, I'll even notice, like, just talking to friends of mine oh, who are oh. in the sport, uh, even just talking to friends of mine who are in the sport. Oh wow! Yeah, I dropped him with my left hand. Bink. Oh, boom. Yeah, and and that that was a couple years ago, but another mm. walk off. You think KO. he could have gotten? You, how you think if they would have given him? He's out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> left handed. Dink. You See, think I, guys ever pretend to be out? I bet they do. This dink. Oh yeah. No, I killed him basically. No, yeah, they uh the Ion Kuta Laba fight versus uh Magomed, he was kind of acting like he was yeah, rocked I, and then they they stopped the fight. I actually. believe that. I believe that. It's probably scary getting rocked and you're like, "Ah, just get me out of here." Yeah. And you can't climb out of the top, right? That would be sweet. <laughs> if someone did that, that would be fucking sweet. It, but you can't do it. You, well, I they think, don't put a top on it. No, they they probably you know, DQ you or whatever. But if you're ever getting fucked up, just I'm getting climb fucked out. Up, I'm dipping. Take Abbott. Yeah, <laughs> get crack. I'm dipping. Bro, Bro, I what? would <laughs> climb out of the top uh, easily. Uh, now, can you legally bad. climb onto the top and jump off of that, or you can't? <sighs> Ooh, that, see, I don't know if uh, you can't grab inside the fence, but you could kind of run up the cage, probably. But uh, I, see, that's another finish we got somewhere locked in, like is a, a cage kick. Like I know Anthony Pettis hit that on Benson, but he didn't finish him. There hasn't really been any sweet finishes jumping off the cage, right? And and, and we definitely could could land something like that soon. Yeah, because I want to know how sweet the f- the sugar show can get. Ooh, you yeah, know what I'm saying? I want to see you make We're somebody disappear. No, I could probably <laughs> do that. We're just getting started. Like I'm 25, and and I I got a, easily another 10 years. Yeah. You know, but the way I eat and the way I train and the way I take care of my body, I'm still going to be, I think 36, 37, 38, I'm still going to be fucking good. Yeah. So I plan on being in this sport for a long time and getting a lot of fucking sweet finishes. So when you're out there, when you, whenever you whenever you get in, into the, into the octagon, do you think about like, are you already kind of thinking about the finish? As the fight goes on, if it starts to feel comfortable, do you start to think like, Oh, I could finish this right now, but I'm going to wait a minute. Has that ever kind of happened? Or it's not like that there's too much intensity? Mm, In that last fight, when I hit him with that body kick, the spinning body kick, I've dropped a lot of people with that. And that motherfucker was so tough. He tried toughen it out. Have you ever been hitting the liver hard? Uh, Your body just freezes up. You get like paralyzed. hit me one time, dude. (laughs) And bro, I still fucking, every time I eat a snicker, my fucking body hurts a little. But he still tried, like after I landed that, I'm like, I'm taking this dude out. I knew I was going to take him out. Um, because of that, that just hitting someone with that shot is so 
dangerous and so powerful and I've landed it so many times. And at that point, you start to feel mm. like a hunter at that point? Yeah. I felt like, okay, I'm getting this dude out of here. But I wanted that spin kick. I missed it barely because I hit him with the left body kick deep and I threw a right right hook and it landed hard. And then I switched stances and threw a spinning kick because that's what I wanted for the finish. But that's, in that moment, I knew I was about to get him out of there. That's why I spun. I, was, I tried to take his fucking head off and <laughs> spun myself around. Um... But I knew I had him hurt, and I did think, okay, how am I going to finish this, dude? And that's why I wanted that spin kick bad, but then it missed, and I was like, I don't want to gas myself out. Just dinked him. Yeah. Do you um, do you feel like, like, what do you, do you think there's something unique about your body type, or just like there's some gift that makes it how you're able to kind of flow the way that you do? Like, where do you think it comes from? Do you think that it just comes from training? Do you think, like, what do you really feel like? Yeah, I feel like I was definitely gifted athletically, just being an athlete and being able to move the way I do. Um, I played basketball, football, soccer, baseball growing up till I was about 16. That's when I started kickboxing. But I think playing all those sports made me, like, a pretty good athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then once I started kickboxing, I was never really taught hands up, left hand, like, how to... Throw properly, yeah. Because we just go and spar, and I oh, would just, yeah. f I think I would just flow, switch stances, throw shit, and I, it would that just became my style, just switching stances and doing stuff like that, and then slowly kind of building on that. But you know, a lot of coaches were like, "No, let, you can't do that. You're gonna, you're gonna get beat up. You're gonna get knocked out. Put your hands up." I've been told that literally since I started fighting. Right. Like some people get mad at me. Put your fucking hands up while I'm sparring. But like, you like to do it your way. But I'm like, my I ain't getting hit. My right. hands are that, these 16 ounce gloves are too fucking heavy for my little ass arms to pull up. I'm gonna keep them down low, <laughs> and uh, that's just kind of how I've developed my style, and it, and it's worked out. And then I think um, the work I put in is not just fucking hard work, but I work smart. Yeah, I have a hot tub at home, a cold plunge at home, a sauna at home, a mat room where I can stretch, a foam roll. I have all these tools to where I can recover. And, and and eat perfect and then I can go train hard the next day. And if I don't if I don't feel like I can train hard, I'll take that day off. And and I think Michael Bisbing's coach said uh, it takes confidence to take a day off. Because when you have a fight coming up, that you're thinking, fuck, I got to get in shape for that fight. I can't take the day off. Right. And that's where a lot of people get hurt. Um, but I feel like... There's, a, so there's in, a way to properly rest. I'm mean. so in tune with my body. I know what it needs to do. I know if I need a rest. I know if I can push. Um, so I think... That, that helps me get that confidence to get in the mm -hmm. cage and get into that flow state where I'm just purely confident. Do you feel like in y'all's, uh, I know we were talking about kind of like moving weight and stuff. Is there anybody that's kind of like retired or anything that you've, whenever you, over the past few years, you're like, oh fuck, I was hoping maybe somewhere in the back of my head one day to get to fight that guy. I think I think Henry will, uh, I think that'll be a fight someday. It could be a big fight. So who the caballero, huh? <laughs> um, I think that could be a big fight someday. <clears throat> he got really offended. I don't know if you've seen my comment after my fight. They asked me about him retiring. About his girlfriend, you and mean? And I said he's 30. He got his first girlfriend. He got really – that stung him. Really? He posted on his Instagram. He went on Joe Rogan. Let's talk about Sean O'Malley. Like got a f So that poked at him. So if someone's that insecure and easy to poke at, he's going to want to fight me. Right. But if he's smart, he probably won't because – he he said, well, he needs to work on his wrestling and jiu-jitsu. I guess his jiu-jitsu is getting pretty good. That's what he said on Rogan. But like I'm telling you, people think, oh, I'm, let's just take him down. I'm gonna choke them, or I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna submit him, or I'm gonna get back up. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be like they grab me, take me down, and, and the fight's over. Right. I'm gonna either get back up, or I'm gonna choke him off my back, elbow him. It's not gonna it's I'm I can I can scrap I can get scrappy down there. Um, so that could be a big fight someday. I don't think he's done. I think he's you know if you're in your prime. For I don't know. It's for me. If I'm in my prime, it's hard to put yourself in that position. Right. It's like, do you so retire much. as the king, or do you? Because I heard you talk about this. Like you'd like to just keep going until. I'd almost rather lose and be like, I, I try. I gave my everything instead of no. I'm too insecure. My ego's too big to lose. What do you think is a weakness in his game? I mean, I mean, his. That's a, he's he's the highest level you get. That's right. that's a high level black belt MMA fighter. He can box. He can wrestle. Um, I, I don't know about his jiu-jitsu, but when you're wrestling that high level, he doesn't almost need that much jiu-jitsu. If he gets the takedown, he can control on the top, posture up, ground and pound. He's he's fucking really, really good. He's definitely the best bantamweight, and then he retired, obviously. Was Cruz his last fight, or he had one yeah. more after that? Uh, no, Cruz was the yeah, last Cruz. one. Yeah, Cruz. 
Do you think that would be a fight for you? I mean, do you think that? I think I'd knock Cruz out too. I think his style, um, <clears throat> I just it. I feel like I'd knock them all out, so it's hard to say, right. but yeah. But if you had your choice, like say it's, you know, you get up in the morning, you have a full day of knocking people out, Ooh. okay? I would, who do you knock out for breakfast? <laughs> who do you knock out for lunch? And who do you knock out for that tasty okay. late meal, I'd brother? probably throw a fourth one in there too, because I get snacky when I get high. <laughs> okay. So I'd knock out <laughs> Cody for breakfast. Okay. Just get my blood moving. <laughs> okay. I'd probably knock out TJ after that. Oh, just wow. for like a little brunch. Yeah. Um, then I'd knock out Dominic. And then I'd knee Henry in the face while he's shooting. So I'd probably just do those four and then call it. And then probably call out Connor. Wow. Yeah. Just for that midnight. Just for fun. And then Habib. Meal. No, fuck that. I wouldn't <laughs> fight Habib. Fuck that. Habib's crazy, huh? <laughs> I don't want none of that. Now, when you see a guy like Habib fight, I mean, he's a, uh, you know, one thing that, you know, whenever he was fighting, whenever him and Dustin fought, mm -hmm. I, I almost wished that... And this is, look, I, I admit I'm a newcomer to the sport, but I almost wish that for a certain amount of the fight, they had to be on their feet, and then a certain amount of the fight that they didn't have to be, they couldn't be. Right, that'd be um, interesting. No, yeah, because that, that, that changes the whole game. Dustin could, Dustin's got some of the best boxing in the UFC. He's got really good fucking hands. He's got a sweet fight coming up versus Dan Hooker. What? Yeah, that's going to be a great Ooh. fight, man. But yeah, when, when you fight Habib, it's... It's just it's such hard, a, it's dude. like wearing like, you know that blanket they sell you on the internet all the time? It weighs like 80 pounds or something. Yeah. And it won't leave you blankets. alone. Yeah. It's like somebody bought you seven of those for Christmas, dude. Uh, yeah. That would be a, yeah, that, that, that would be a tough fight to even prepare for and just. I yeah. It's know. almost like you just have to hide yourself under a bunch of rocks and then just fucking. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's a good, that'd be a good way to train for it lay under a bunch of rocks and practice yeah, yeah. getting up yeah. fuck dude yeah that's a tough fight i was he almost had that guillotine that guillotine was tight oh. and habib even said that was fucking tight yeah could you imagine if if he would have finished that that would have been legendary that would have been insane but i do think justin gaethje does have a has a pretty good chance against yeah. him compared to the you know the rest of guys habib's fought as far as their wrestling accolades like justin could, could definitely give him a fucking fight yeah have you watched much of him? Uh, I haven't watched a ton of him. I've watched maybe three Just of like his the fights. Recent, the recent ones? Yeah, I guess let me think. Um, the one with Tony you probably watched. Yep, that I definitely watched fuck. that one. That was unbelievable. Dude, that's the only fight you got to watch to <laughs> fucking love Justin Gaethje. And I loved, you know what, I, I actually love, it made me really love both of them, really. Yeah. Because it made me respect Tony at like a, just watching these guys, like you're talking to a guy, like my big thing when I was young was kind of getting my ass beat, you Yeah, know? that's sick, so, though. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Dude, it is pretty cool. <laughs> I like so. Dude, like I almost, even when you when, when you were coming today, I was like, man, I almost want him to fucking knock me out. Boom, <laughs> hit you with some shit. <laughs> yeah, I, just I so I could like be a part of it. That'd be fun. We could spar because I sparred this kid from Canada. I flew him down. He was one of my Twitch subscribers, and we sparred. We did three threes. Tim was the ref, and uh, it's was on it my cool? it's on my it YouTube. Good. It's it fucking good. hilarious because he was never he always talked shit to me, but like in a friendly way. But right, and it was just fun as shit. But he started jujitsu after that, and he stayed consistent, which is oh, cool. That's awesome. But it was a perfect like I obviously know my know my control, uh -huh. and. Uh, yeah, we did it at the lab. I, so I didn't beat him up bad to where he left like hurt. Right. But I, he was puking, tired, and just like wow. It was it was one of the it it was my favorite fight I've ever been in. It was so <laughs> fucking funny. Like, I think Theo might catch you though. Might put you sleep. Boy. Yeah, Theo might catch me with the right hand. Yeah, I would probably use my legs more. Boom. <laughs> 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 no, but we should. That would be a fucking good ass video, and it would be fun. It's good for. I would like to learn that because it, yeah, yeah. it feels almost to see what that's like. Like um, one thing that I, that that was awesome the first time that Dustin came on, he was talking about like whenever you go through a fight, like whenever you get through a fight, like win or lose, like you learn. There's like you learn something about yourself at like a at a level that we can't really duplicate unless it's that. Unless it's Dude, that. Dude, I agree one hundred percent. That and weight cuts. I think everyone should go through a weight cut in, in a fist fight, like a kickboxing fight. Yeah. The weight cuts are so – it's crazy what goes through your mind when you're, those last couple days. It feels like, kind of Native American, doesn't it? What do you mean? Like I feel like the weight cuts, like I feel like when you get to those last couple pounds. I mean, dude, I almost – I didn't eat for six days once and almost fucking what? ate a dude at Best Buy. Yeah, I almost fucking bit Just into a Just on purpose? Dude. Fasting? Or what? Yeah. I almost bit oh, into a fucking guy at Best Buy. I believe Buy. it. You a get beautiful crazy. Guy. A beautiful guy. Yeah, I mean, he looked fucking Yummy. like you start to think of yeah. a dude like if the power went out, this dude's yeah, going to die. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Especially if you know some jujitsu. Oh, yeah. Then you get that real confidence. Oh, yeah, like, I could kill you and yeah. eat you. That's what's so powerful about jujitsu. Really? You know you're in the, if you know you're in a fucking place 
and you got to eat, right? You can kill him, eat him. Right, yeah, you have that yeah. new skill. Yeah, because otherwise I got to like convince Hit him with a people. fucking bat yeah. or something. Yeah, I got to sneak up. Yeah. I got to poison him. As long as you just learn a rear naked choke, a good clean one, mm -hmm. and you can sneak up on anybody and eat them. Yeah, but but those last few days through a weight cut, like Thursday morning, I wake up, I'm like, all right, today's going to suck. You get yeah. damn near no water and hardly any food. But then you also, what goes through my mind also is like, there was like the people suffer way worse in other right. countries like that don't have food or water like i can go shower a clean water and people don't have that so I, it's always a good perspective to remind yourself like okay yeah. life's still fucking good you but, could you could look at pictures of food on your phone yeah you can be yeah. great just being grateful for the things that you yeah that we still have but that's what's so good about those weight cuts is it can really show you like teach you a lot and it's a pro and it's also like it's a really i never thought about this but it's kind of like a it's like a almost a red carpet up to the fight it almost it's like a respect because they're doing it as well yeah so it's like both of you guys are kind of like yeah we're going to condition ourselves for this war we're about to go into Fuck yeah and, and the thing about weight cutting too is like if this guy doesn't know if he's not eating perfect like i am and he's not doing exactly what he needs to do like i got that shit down to a science i'm doing everything perfect and this right. guy's not that's an advantage for me going into the fight yeah and i feel like if i i feel like whoever i'm fighting is not going to be doing the exact thing that i'm doing and i feel like i'm always going to have a little advantage there so yeah. it, it's good mentally going into the fight too especially some guys like we'll weigh in before that fight when i fought jose mm -hmm. we weighed in Quint and, Quineres, is that his name quinones yeah quinones? jose quinones we walked walked past uh, the buffet or whatever and these fighters just weighed in like an hour ago and they're eating french toast and nah. syrup and just a bunch of shit that's oh. gonna just fuck you it's up probably fucking brendan and dude <laughs> <laughs> <If> anybody <laughs> brendan he probably did that shit oh brendan <laughs> definitely <laughs> would dude bro uh, he one time he fucking showed me a rare stick of butter he got from someone <laughs> in his pocket from another country and he checked this out yeah, yeah, that's dude. fucking sweet. It's like, don't tell nobody. That's fucking sweet. <laughs> but yeah, fighting's a fucking crazy sport, and then the weight cut on top of it's uh, almost a sport itself. Like, yeah, it seems like it that. Support for this past weekend comes from Manscaped, who is number one in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, you nuts. You got to take care of your body and. Some of your body includes your nuts and pecker and all of that lower body. And, you know, these days you just got to, you don't want to snag something down there. You don't want to be, you know, uh, you know, you don't want to get a, a fish hook or something snagged over down by your nuts. So you got to tighten your body up and nobody helps you do that more than Manscaped. Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their perfect package 2.0. Inside the perfect package, you'll find their electric trimmer called the Lawn Mower 2.0. This waterproof and skin-safe technology will protect you from nicking your bag. That's right. You can you could you could trim your your body in the shower now. It's waterproof. It's skin-safe. You're not gonna nick your nuts. You're gonna be fine. You're not gonna bleed. Get 20% off in free shipping and support the podcast. With the code Theo, T H E O, at manscaped.com. That's right. Get 20% off in free shipping and support the podcast with code Theo at manscaped.com. That's 20% off in free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code Theo. Take care of your body. It also comes with the crop preserver and anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. So take care of your body, man. It's your body, and it's your penis, and it's your nuts. Be good, huh? Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Fellas, do you remember when you were fully ready in your body for sex? When you would think about sex and just be able to be erect? Remember when your body just knew what to do? Huh. Well... It can happen again. You can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. BlueChew.com. That's blue, like the color blue. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. 
You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. You've already had spaghetti. You've already had a uh, couple pieces of uh, banana nut bread. It doesn't matter. Have a chewable wiener upper. That's right. They work twice as fast as a pill. So you can be ready whenever the opportunity arises. Benefit from the confidence. Blue Chew, the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. It is prescribed online by licensed physicians. So you don't have to go to the doctor or wait in line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door. They're made in the USA and it ships direct. So they are cheap. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. You can support the podcast. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code, Theo. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code T-H-E-O, to try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, we had a question that came in here. We got a young fella right here that sent in a question for us. Let's get into it right here. This beautiful white right here. Whoa. Bunch of beautiful whites. Yeah. What's up, boys? Brady from Asheville, North Carolina. Originally from Montana, 406. Sean, my question for you is, with Tim being your best friend and your head coach, do you ever find it difficult knowing when to turn off one of those relationships and have him be just your coach or just your best friend? That's all I got. Gang, gang, buzz, buzz. Gang, bro. Gang, gang. Yeah, that's a good question. I get, I actually get asked that quite a bit. And I feel like even when it's coaching, we're still fucking around. Right. <laughs> but we know when it's, when it's a serious, hey, this – I don't know. I feel like we've never had an issue with that to where it's like, hey, I'm coaching right now. We always know, like, the, the goal is world champ. I want right. to be the best ever. So, and both you guys have the same goal. And we mm -hmm. have that goal in mind. So we know when, when, when to fuck around and when to turn it off and train. Um, and we've never had an issue with that. Tim, now let's hear your side of it. <laughs> yeah, same shit. As soon as we get in the gym and it's time to work, it, that we're there to fucking work. We still fuck around, but like I said, that's the main goal is be world champ. So once the once it's time to get that session done, we get it done. Yeah. Recently, like obviously, you know, like uh, I was watching some of your interviews and stuff, and there's times in it where I'm like, oh, Sean's very confident, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, Sean is very flamboyant. You know, he's like he's a show. Yeah. You know, they call it the sugar show. Yeah. You know, and I start to get like, okay. I kind of see what's going on here. Sometimes you say stuff and I'm like, Jesus, I can't believe you fucking <laughs> said that. Like That's I go cool. through all these range of emotions yeah. when I'm watching your interviews, <laughs> right? Do you know, like, um, like, do you start to, and, and I noticed this myself as I started to get more popularity, like your ego is a thing that lives right. inside right. of you. And it's kind of scary sometimes it because it's like, okay, what's confidence? What, what's ego? When, when do I kind of turn on one on and turn, you know, do you notice some of that inside of yourself? Yeah, when I wear my sugar chain, mm -hmm. sugar's out. That's my ego. I know, I know, I know when I need to do well. Like at the gym, I want people to treat me as Sean. Like right. I got this, and I feel like I do a really good job about turning that off and being and not being in my head like I'm I'm sugar. I'm the man. I'm the fucking. I knock people out. Um, when I do interviews, I kind of just I just. I feel like when the confidence the confidence is real, it's true. I think people can tell when someone's really confident when they're trying to fake it. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably my ego too, but it, almost in a healthy way. You, you well, you need. I feel like you need that if right. you want to get to the level that you want to get to. Because it seems like right. you not only want to be a champion, you want to be a. F a I want to be one of the best to ever fight. Like I think, and I think with my athletic ability and my skill set, that's constantly improving. I, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be, I can definitely get there. Um, I think, yeah, and it's always a battle, ego and your true self, and and being like when I'm at home with Danny, my girl, our relationship is so good, and it's like it's me, it's Sean and Danny, um, and if it's Sugar and Danny, there's it collides almost in in a way. It's hard to it's hard to talk about the ego too yeah no it's hard to talk about it. look I, I it's, it's interesting yeah it is interesting but I, and then we listen to guys like uh, eckert tolley and and fucking ryan holiday ryan yeah ryan holiday the the stoic books and, and um who's the awareness guy oh uh anthony demello anthony demello and just listening to fucking these smart guys 
talk about and, and talk about happiness and what's true happiness and and stuff like that it's, it's a trip to think about my ego and then my my real self my true self almost and, and understanding that i have an ego and i can't be st- i can't get stuck in that ego right after the fight i gotta come back to sean when i'm home right when i'm at home when it's with my dogs and danny i'm sh- i gotta be sean i can't constantly be that ego you get lost in that fucking world. Oh, Look, it could be scary. You get lost in your ego and then you're never yourself and then it's like harder to bring back, hard to come back to your true self. So I feel like I do good about mixing it up and knowing when to be Sugar and knowing when to be Sean. Sugar's next. So Sugar's obviously, you know, like um, there's a couple of ways you could kind of do the next couple years of your life, you mm-hmm. know? And, and, you know, you could go kind of... I bet if they wanted to, they would offer you, yeah, you want to fight, you know, you'd have a bunch of guys that might be pissed, Yeah. but if you want to fight straight up, you know, if you want to go, you know, and get closer to the top and have a chance at the at the strap now, or it's like, do you want to take your way up? Like, what do you, it's, what do you feel like is truly going to be best for you? There's, you know, UFC is a business, a really, really right. smart, intelligent business, and I'm a fucking star in the making. Like, it's clear the audience is attracted to what I have to put out and I'm a high level performer. So they got to build me like a business like they did right. Connor. Um, but me as a fighter, I'm like, I can f- like fight. I feel like I'm the best. I can fight anybody and beat them. Um, so we got to just kind of figure out what's next, take smart fights, but also like I fought Eddie Wineland. He's not an easy fight. Mm-mm. Like some people will say, oh, they're giving you bums. Eddie Wineland is not a fucking bum at all. Eddie Wineland will beat all of our fucking dad's asses. <laughs> exactly. <up. laughs> Eddie Wineland is a bad motherfucker. So they're not giving me fights. Jose Quinones was like six and one in the UFC. He yeah. wasn't an easy fight. Right. Um, so I see people on there saying they're giving me easy fights and stuff. But I think the UFC is going to build me smart. And, and my next fight is going to be another tough, a tougher fight than Eddie. But not super. Because... It, realistically fighting anybody in the top 10 is, is a tough fucking fight for me i'm not gonna go out there and smoke anyone. yeah this is the top 10 in the world in the weight yeah. class so no fights easy especially when you got those fucking little gloves and people throw bombs yeah so any fight's not a give me fight um but i think they're gonna try to do it smart build me up smart that's what they're gonna try to do what would you try to do i i think like a businessman too i know i'm only in this sport for you know 10 years can sound like a long time but once i'm once it's over i'm like fuck did i do that right i want to look back and go i did that right um i'm getting called out by a lot of a lot of wrestlers and i feel i'm like god i want to fight these motherfuckers like who like what do you mean like wrestlers like you mean like guys that literally want to grab my legs hold me down and not fight like Murab, that kid that just fought last uh last weekend oh i think man like fucking wrestlers do from the wwe oh, yeah. i thought no, you no, meant like real wrestlers no no guys that oh, are wow. like, okay like scared to fight right but love to grapple and wrestle right. just this um, hermit crab kind of dudes yeah. yeah and it's a risky fight for me to take because it doesn't cater to your strong suits or it, it doesn't, doesn't cater to what you like to do yeah i like knock people out but i <laughs> like i'm when i think of myself as a i feel like i'm really good at jujitsu but it's a risky fight taken against someone that literally will take you down and hold you there it's, yeah it, it's not it's almost what the like they're fans, lonely kind of yeah it's not what the people want to see it's not you know but once i'm champ i'll take all those motherfuckers right. on. like it doesn't matter i'm champ i have to fight who's next but to get to the champ let's take the smarter fights and i know a lot of people are gonna be like oh, that's fucked up you're a pussy but definitely you know but it's a business and everybody gets to do the business it's it not is. like they don't uh, like everybody like like you have some different path and uh, like you have a, your own path but yeah. everybody's in the same business i'm still fighting these guys in the ufc of that are gonna be like um so and, and and i think a lot of the people get jealous like the guys are like oh you're picking fights we're not picking fights it's just i'm not gonna fight someone that's boring that no one gives a fuck about no one wants to see me fight right we're gonna, you know what I mean. So, You're gonna make a smart choice. Yeah, we gotta make a smart choice with the business. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, same thing, dude. It's like you want to fight a guy who literally just kind of wants to dry hump on you and pump on you and oh. try to win the rounds by ten nine, or do you want to fight a guy? If we fight a wrestler who comes in there and wants to take him down and beat the fuck out of him, hell yeah, like let's, a Habib let's style, do that. Like ground and pound, like. But some of these guys literally just lay on people. Oh yeah, and they're it's perverts not, almost. Yeah, it's they should get yeah. charged. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, some of this shit is just, just like, like that's gay. Nothing yeah, wrong bro. with gay. Yeah. No, but don't let's don't say. be let's don't be gay while we're in yeah, these exactly, rounds. Exactly. Let's meet up after and hug yeah, if we have to. I agree with that. But don't waste our the, the clock time. Exactly. We got a gentleman right here who's obviously interested and in, has a question for us. 
From uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley, I got a question. Uh, what do you think about six nine? Huh? <laughs> I want to know. I want to. I want to know about about your hair too. I fucking love you. I'm a fan. I saw you talk about this before, but I'm a fan, dude. I think it's almost fascinating. And I know the question's for you, but uh, but I just stole it. But um, I think it's just the dude's fascinating, bro. Like when he said he was gonna be on at midnight, I fucking showed dude, up. I was there. Yeah, I, I was there. I'm a fan <laughs> too. But then people like, oh, he's a snitch. I don't give a. F- I don't pay attention to who he snitched on, what he was in jail right, for. I don't, I don't give a fuck. It's, I just think his music <laughs> hype. We're going to the gym, or we're fucking. We're, we're, we're getting hype. I'm throwing on some 6 9 Gooba. Yeah. And if I got to watch the music video with Nicki Minaj, watch that a couple times already. Do you see that yet? Yeah, I saw it twice, dude. <sighs> Those tatas. But yeah, I'm a fan of his. He's a character. Yes. That is his character's working. And about the hair, before we even knew 6 9 like my debut, we talked about, hey, let's do my hair like like crazy. And I kind of wanted to establish my name in the UFC, get it, you know, show that I'm for real. And then, uh, so, so the hair was definitely a little bit inspired, but I'm like, dude, that his, his hair looks sick. It looks fucking crazy. And he's a, yeah, and he's a fucking character. I want to be a character. I want people yeah. to be like, what the... If they've never seen fighting, I want them to look at the screen and be like, oh, what the... F- I, want, I want to watch this guy right. fight. He's got crazy hair. He's tall as shit, skinny. Well, you have to stand out, especially if you want to... I mean, there's, it's interesting to watch what you guys do in y'all's business. Like, it's definitely changed over the past few years, I think, with guys calling each other out more, mm-hmm. like becoming characters. Mm-hmm. Like, everything in the world has kind of become... Uh, you know, we talk about it a lot that everything's kind of become like the WWE a little yeah. bit. Fuck like yeah. every, like politicians, everybody, it's all about just sound bites and how can I, how can I rise out of whatever's going on and, and, and be seen really? Absolutely, um, yeah. And it definitely seems like you do that. Do you think you'll have a different hairstyle? Like, do you have other plans for like, uh, for future bounce? Yeah, I think we're going to continue with the, like doing different colors of my hair. Danny, my girl does hair, so she right. did all this. So, and she, we got a bunch of different colors. So we'll play around with it. Um, maybe I was thinking like, uh, whoever I fight next, wearing their flag color hair. Oh, that'd be dope. Just to, just to peck at him. Like, when I fought Jose, I like to say things that are going to nudge at him. When I fought Jose, I said, well, we'll see who's more Mexican. Yeah. And he got pissed. <laughs> but then I get people saying, you're racist. Like, my girl's fucking Mexican. <laughs> yeah. um, but just saying little things that are going to fl- fire people up. Because if I can get someone emotional to fight me, right. they're going to come forward like Jose did. They're going to come forward like Eddie did and want to take my head off. And that's not a good game plan. You're getting knocked out doing that. So if I can get someone emotional and want to really just hit me, that's good. Because do you respond? Like, say if somebody did that to you, you don't respond to it the same I way? I don't take do anything personally. Right. Like, I know, I understand that. Like, you could say, I fucked your mom. I'd be like, cool. Like, yeah. you could tell it somebody, but my mom. Yeah, my mom fucked at least probably five people. Everybody's mom did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but just not taking anything personally. Right. And, yeah, because uh, it's interesting because she's so, that's what, okay. So to you, it's like. It's a game. It's a, it's a show. It's a show. It's a fucking, it's sugar. Yeah. But I'm, well, I'm Sean. In, in a way where I'm always kind of shunned, but I'm not going to take it personally. Right. It's going to be, if I take it personally, that's going to affect how I fight. I might fight emotional. Right. And when I don't fight emotional, I fight calm. Yeah. Very calm. And I feel like the more calm I can be, the more dangerous I am. So if someone says something and I get personal about it, I think that could change how I fight. It definitely changes how people fight me. Oh, for sure. They get, well, it's how most fights start. Like if you're just in regular human interaction, like at a bar or post dude, office or whatever, most people fight because somebody gets fucking pissed. Emotional. Yeah. And guys like Cody Garbrandt who get mad if you sneeze next to him. Yeah. It's like, holy shit, that's too easy. Yeah. Like I'm sure he's already just at home just want to want to fight me do you think that for him it might be uh, the fight to take do you feel like no i don't don't think that's a good fight for him he needs another fight he needs he's still on his comeback he's he i'm ranked number 15 the rankings are pretty much pretty stupid like as far as who gets title fights and stuff um i'm ranked number 15 he's he's just beat number two or three or whatever so he's probably not gonna fight me um it's a lose lose he beats me people like oh you beat the number 15 he gets knocked out. Obviously, that's not a win for him. Um, so I think that's going to be a big pay per view fight someday. Right. Like I think that's going to be a big a big fight someday. If you're to jump out, like you know, say you're able to get out, like if you were out of the weight class, if you could get into another class, who's somebody that you would you'd really love to go at? Who the higher up you get, the more scary those motherfuckers get. Oh, it gets scary, dude. I get scared to even read a lot of these charts. Yeah, <laughs> extremely scared. No shit. Like, I can't read them for. I'm trying to go to sleep. Like the 55 division right there, and 77, and even 85 or 70 and 85. 
Th- those divisions are so scary. Those oh. humans are so athletic and powerful, and, and their skill levels. You know, they're high level MMA fighters too. So I definitely wouldn't want to fight any of them. I love when <clears throat> guys like Henry Cejudo is like, "I'm the baddest motherfucker on the world." I'm like, "You're five three, dude. You ain't that bad. <laughs> like, you're good for your weight class, but dude, you're not. You're not fucking up Francis. <laughs> Do you? Uh, Francis will fuck you. Eat like snack, dude. <laughs> <laughs> little nugget. <laughs> little nugget. He, do you think? Uh, do you think, fuck, do you think that um, like your confidence comes from a certain place? Do you, did you always have that? I, I think the confidence that I have carrying into the cage comes from no, when I know I have that foot that fight booked to the fight day. I'm doing everything right. Right from like I talk about my nutrition, my sleeps on my sleeps on point. Um, You're locked in. My train. I'm locked the fuck in. So. I'm doing everything right. So when I'm in that backstage, I'm not nervous. I don't feel any nerves. Yeah. I'm calm. I'm chilling. I, I, I'm ready to go out there and perform because I knew, know I did everything right. But there's times where, you know, like my last two fights, I didn't really have any injuries, which was very important. Um, going into a fight with an injury could definitely fuck with that confidence. Right. Uh, like, God, I don't know. I haven't really had to go into a, a fight. With an injury yet. Yeah. Besides, I had a torn labrum when I fought those two guys, but I was still able to train. Um, it didn't affect me as much until after because labrums tear. They tear, 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 tore to the point where I needed surgery. Um, so, yeah, going into the fight, just knowing I'm doing everything right. But even when I was 16, when I first started, for some reason, I thought I was going to go knock these guys out. Wow. And I was just a little skinny kid. Like, Yeah, that's the difference between you, I from. think, and people that don't like to fight. Like, if I've ever gotten in a fight, it's been like, fuck, I'm not going to knock this guy out. <laughs> like, Jesus, how fuck. do I how do I make this end? I don't think I... <laughs> no, I you just flinch at him, might knock no someone shit. out. What, that's a good point, bro. If what? I hit him with that hard fucking dirty flinch, dude. That, that's true. If I fucking hide somebody up under well, my... Well, imagine, imagine if you just rolled out one day, Theo, with your hair rainbow colored. How that would be sick. Just freak. We're going to do something special around the holidays, That'd I think. we <laughs> We thought about doing something seasonal. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> something seasonal. Maybe a Thanksgiving, a kind of a turkey Ooh, kind of motif or that cut. That would be sweet. That would be cool. Uh, we got a question right here from a young man who took his shirt off. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hope he has an accent. Hey, Theo, it's Daniel from London. He does. i got a question here for Sugar. If you had a choice, what would you be? The best UFC fighter in the world or the best Fortnite player in the world? I'm going to have to answer gang, that. Gang, buzz, buzz. Gang, bro. Gang, gang, bye, bye. Good question. Yeah, I used to play a lot of fucking Fortnite. You ever play that? or no? My nephews play it. Yeah, okay. I've seen them play. I, I don't play it too much anymore. I play more Call of Duty now, or mm-hmm. only Call of Duty now. But definitely, I get asked that. Like, If you could stream and make more money, would you do that? Mike? Like, fighting's my fighting is what i truly truly love to do and, and, and performing just being on that if i if i could fucking sing or rap or do anything and perform i fucking want to do it i crave that yeah so so definitely fighting it's fun huh i love performing it's it's sweet because and when i was like when i was growing up i literally remember telling my friends like, i'm gonna be famous and they're like what how right. i don't know I don't, I don't know i'm gonna be famous and i don't know why i wanted to be probably because i was insecure that's probably what it came from like i want people to like me right yeah um, yeah. yeah but i always wanted the to... studio so yeah oh i know my house I'm like, man that's a sick pic of me that's a sick pic of me hey you want to watch my fight oh yeah i'm always crazy. asking danny but uh <laughs> um what was i saying uh oh yeah performing i i, I just love performing and and uh, it's I don't remember what I was gonna say. Something sick though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was gonna be sweet. It was gonna be some philosophy, yeah. but whatever. Do uh, we got a question right here from a guy? Open your eyes, fella. Hey, right. Sean. Hey, Theo. My question is: We've seen a lot of fighters struggle in the day-to-day basis in terms of finance. You know, the cost of living going up by year, food, medical, petrol, training, housing. My question to you is: Should there be a fighters union to help with the financial side of it? You know, help the low tier fighters. We were saying a few weeks ago, Brandon Royal saying he has to work a second job, a second job, and he's in the UFC. Should a UFC fighter be having a second job? My question is, what the fuck size is that bed, and how does he really sleep on it? It is a small That's bed, like a huh? Toy. That, is it a toy? You, yeah, look how there's only eight little bars going across. <laughs> it looks like the pen, baby. Yeah, that is a very <laughs> lean bed. This could be a the oldest baby I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, fighters pay. It, it's weird when you look at other sports making how much money compared to professionals fighters. 
I mean, I don't obviously know the how much UFC is making, how much Dana making, and how right. I obviously know how much we're making, and it's not that much for, compared to other athletes. But like guys like Brandon Royal, just won his fight. You know, that's at least twenty thousand dollars, and he has to go work a second job. It's like that's his choice. He can quit. Twenty thousand dollars will last you a couple months. Get really good. Get another fight. Book another fight. Perform. Make another win. And and you don't have to work you, you, unless you know maybe he has kids and shit and I don't know about but it depends how bad you want it right at the end of the day uh, I don't even like talking about the money when I I did talk about it and bring it up because I wanted the UFC to know I'm I need to renegotiate that's right what, like I'm gonna bring it up unless we get to yeah and uh but I even if you don't compare it to the who's the other athletes that are making so much money and be like damn I made eighty G's last fight yeah. That's a lot of fucking money. Maybe not compared to the 100 mil that the MLB guy just got for fucking swinging a baseball bat. But it's still like we make a lot of money compared to people that work nine to fives and, right. and shit like that. So, And it's more dangerous. So I don't know. It's tough to say. It's really dangerous. I mean, I feel like it's about to change. Um, Hopefully. Do you, do you get that feeling, Nick, that it's about to change, that you guys are about to start getting paid more? You guys, I'm, you, I'm not one of them. But you are, you are. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> but I just know Nick loves the sport. No, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I I just don't see a union ever happening because yeah. for guys, the most influential guys in the sport, like uh, Sean and Connor and John, it doesn't make sense. It kind of puts a cap on what they can make. It really only helps those lower tier guys, and it's yeah. like it's easy for me to say. But yeah, fighting's kind and of a choice. No one's guaranteeing you a living. The pay per view, the way it works, is like the champ. And the, whoever they're fighting get the pay per view. Right. So people ask me, "Oh, you're gonna be on a Connor pay per view? You're gonna get that money?" I don't get any extra if I'm on a Connor pay per view or any pay per view for that matter, unless I'm the champ, right? Or unless I'm the main event in the main event. So, it, and I in in my position, I think I'm gonna do fine. I'm never really gonna have to worry about pay me more because I think I'm gonna be able to once I'm in that main main event spot, that's where I'm gonna fight. I'm never gonna go from the main event down to not main event. Right. With with the the hype that my I'm gonna bring to these fights. Mm -hmm. I wanna sell these fights, so these pay per views, say the yeah, right things and first. it's fun as fuck. Yeah. Chael Sonnen was the man at it. Connor was the man at it. And uh, it's it's doable. So I think when I do get in those spots, I think we're gonna be able to sell good pay per views. And especially fighting like Cody Garbrandt who's another star ish. Like I it takes two people to build a big pay per view, yeah, um, and I think I'm gonna get there, and and it'll be good. The money will be good. Um, are there guys uh, that are below you in the ranking and stuff that you look at and you're like, damn, this guy's a is a straight up, or anybody you're even hearing about, like this guy's a, like that, you know, you're like this guy's a real fucking problem. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely guys like in the division. Bantamweight division is the most stacked division in the UFC right now. I feel like from one to ten, it's it's so fucking stacked. When I how confident I am, it doesn't mean I'm gonna. I don't see them as they suck. Like I'm not like this is gonna be easy. Right. I feel like I'm gonna be able to show up that night and outperform them. Yeah. Like that's how I feel about everybody. Um, but none of those guys are easy fights at right. all. I didn't think Eddie was necessarily an easy fight. I was just super confident that I'm gonna show up that night and perform better than him. Um, so looking at the division, there's a ton of guys. I'm like, whoo, uh, that's a tough fight. Yeah. But I'll probably still knock him out. That's right. what's going through my mind. I mean, you have to think that. I mean, that's the only thing you really can think is that you're going to win. So sometimes it's like, yeah, for people that come on you about your ego and stuff like that or come on you and mm -hmm. say, man, he sounds really confident or trash talk. What else? I mean, I guess there's maybe ways to phrase things. But, but if I'm walking into a fight, I'm not thinking, fuck, I hope we both do well. A lot of guys <laughs> aren't. A lot of guys, you know, I feel like I built this skill set of working my mind to thinking that way and i don't think a lot of people can a lot of fighters can go into fights thinking the way i think it's a skill that i've built up and i've practiced i've had over 30 fights too and i've done a lot of mental work you know even just meditation and stuff like that um and in in my breath work and stuff like that i can kind of make my thoughts like that right where I'd, some fighters are in the back you heard Don donald cerrone talking about it. he's fucking terrified wow. you hear Chael Sonnen saying he's not the only one I think all I think 95% of the guys that are going into fights are terrified and yeah. aren't thinking I'm gonna fuck this dude up I think I think like that because I know how to work my mind and know how to have those thoughts pop up and, and, and navigate where my thoughts go so I think it's a skill set 
It's interesting you say, to hear you say that, man. Yeah, because then you get into the fight and you're like, okay, how am I going to... How, it's more like, how am I going to do this than what's going to happen? Right. Like, if you full, walk into the fight like, shit, I don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. here. That's a different approach to something than, man, I know what's going to happen here. I just have to find exactly how I'm going to get it done. Yeah. And like I said, I kind of let my bo- I let, let go of all thought when it comes down to how the fight's going to play out. I just trust my higher self that I'm going to go in there and do what I need to do. Okay. But a lot of fighters, <clears throat> even myself before, pre, like b- before I even really got in the UFC, you would say, oh, how's the fight going to go out? Oh, shit. Like, what if he fucking drops me? What if this? What if that? I don't let myself even get there. Wow. I'm like, okay, we're going to go in there. I'm healthy. I'm in shape. And my skill set's high. My skill set versus his skill set. Like, for when I fought A, I knew my striking was high, more high level. If you just watch it from not thinking about, oh, okay, I'm me. Just watching it like, oh, this skill versus it, I'm better. Right. And I knew I was going to show up. So if my skill set's better and I know I'm going to show up, you can't beat me. But there's always that one sh- punch, and I always say that because I know I'm not stupid. I'm not. I'm still realistic. There's that one shot right. that could put your lights out. But when I, if I take myself out of it and just look at the skill set versus skill set, even like if you want to use Cody for example, I feel like his skill set versus my skill set. I'm better. Yeah. He's my striking's better, and I fucking show up. Yeah. He sh- he seems to show up. Sometimes shows up emotional. The last fight he looked better than he did ever, um, and he got the job done. But still, he has that fucking right hand that he dips into and throws oh, um yeah. but when you when i take myself out of it and look at skill set versus skill set that it makes it easier because i truly believe my skill set's so high to where i can be like oh okay if i show up i'm gonna be i'm fine. gonna be good so i'm not gonna overthink the fight i'm not gonna say oh i need hopefully this lands this lands i'm just gonna let myself t- do whatever my body needs to do in there do you practice uh we got a question right here from I'll some guy it. hey theo What's up, hey brother? sean this is shiloh out of missoula <laughs> montana um, just a quick question for Sean. Just wondering how does it feel uh, to be a fighter coming out of Helena? And uh, do you still come back here at all? Yeah, Montana's an interesting place. You know, Daniel Cormier said it best. He felt like when he went to Great Falls, which was, was where Tim's from, hour from where I'm from, it feels like you're going tw- back 20 years in the past. Wow. And it's honestly, and I don't want to say it, like get, have people in Montana get mad at me. It's depressing there. I don't like going back. Mm. It's a weird feeling. Um I think the suicide rate's one of the highest there. It's a depressing place, and I don't know what, why. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, I've been to Deer Lodge before. Okay. Yeah. It, they got a I prison mean, there. Yeah. Tim, that's where Tim's from. Oh, really? <laughs> no, prison. No, 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 no. no, that's where his dad's from. <laughs> yeah. um, but Fuck yeah, Montana's you. cool. Um, I, I'm from Helena. What, there was no, there, there's not a mall there. Like growing up, there wasn't a fucking mall to go to. There was nowhere to go hang out. But my parents had a dope ass house out in the mountains, like mm-hmm. a, fucking right next to the lake. So it was nice. But I don't go back to Montana much. Um, and I think the best thing I ever did was move out of Montana, but I'm super grateful that I'm from Montana because mm-hmm. it made me the person I am. Like what, for whatever reason, it made me the person and it gave me that confidence being in Montana, fighting other guys from Montana, beating them up and just being in Montana. I felt like, uh, def obviously is the reason I was the person I was before I left, but moving out of there was the best thing. I yeah. Most did. people think, Oh, I'm going to go to Montana. I'm probably going to get my ass kicked by some guy. But <laughs> you thought you were like, Oh, I kicked everybody's ass in Montana. I'm going to head on out. But the reason I was beating up people in Montana too, is because it was, they didn't have good gym the training. Train. Yeah. I've heard you talk about this, that the yeah. training where you're at now, you talked about it on rogue and even just mm-hmm. the level of training. It's like one of the three or four hot spots uh, yeah. that you guys spoke about where it's just like one of the best places to train. Over Phoenix. There. Yeah. Montana was not good. And when I came down from Montana, the reason I came to Phoenix is because Tim was watching one of my fights in Great Falls. He was commentating because he was already in Bellator at the time. And he was like, hey, if you want to come down to a real gym, I see potential in you. And you could. So I came down shortly after, a couple weeks after, and I was 18 years old, came to the lab. Literally every single, I was there for 10 days. Every practice I left crying, I'm pretty sure. Damn. Like it was bad. I realized I'm not good at fighting. Like I'm athletic and I, and I, I just don't have the skills. Like uh, people would take me down and beat me up. But like you've she, learned it. And I, and I'm like, but always in the back of my head, I'm like, if I can learn these skills, I'll beat these guys because uh, I'm more athletic. And, and for whatever reason, I felt like I had a pretty good IQ of fighting. And I was like, I just need to learn the skills. I just need to learn the skills. So from when I was 19, when I moved to Phoenix till even today, I'm training pretty much twice a day. I'm still getting really good. I'm getting better. In those two years that I was out, I think I improved more in those two years than I did in the previous four years that I was training because hmm. um, I was training smarter 
and I'm just training with such high level people and I'm retaining the knowledge and, and and it's just and I still feel like I have so much to learn which is why I think I'm so dangerous and it gives me that confidence because I'm like I'm really fucking good right now but I can get I'm just I'm just getting started yeah. imagine in my head I'm like imagine in a couple of years if you How keep training the way you're doing it's scary to think about when my strength and condition, strength and conditioning Brandon Harris when he says like we're just scratching the surface with your fucking abilities and I'm already feeling like a fucking machine. I'm like, if we're just getting going, then I'm going to be a dangerous motherfucker for the rest of the time I'm in the UFC. Do you, uh, is there anybody when it comes to like talk, talking trash and like kind of, you know, like, you know, and you have to these days, you have to be your own PR person, really. Fuck I mean, yeah, 100%. You know, uh, what's that? A quiet goat don't get fucked. That's what they used to say back in the day, you know? <laughs> I like that. Um, quiet goat don't get fucked. And it's like, Tim will fuck it. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? <laughs> you don't have no standards. Tim's been through some bullshit, <laughs> you, man. You don't have no standards. It's bullshit. Like it's Bro, bad. we've all done some things, it's brother. Right. Yeah, fuck it. You know? <laughs> uh, is there uh is there anybody you 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 check in and look at and be like, oh, uh, that you follow their way of talking shit? I definitely uh watched uh, I've God, Chael Sun is the number one, I think. I think he was better than Connor. And I didn't get to watch it. While it's happening, I've, I've had to go back on the YouTube videos, click like Chael Sonnen, Best Trash Talk, and watch, ah, like, fucking, I've watched every single interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've watched Connor's Best Trash Talk. And it's, <clears throat> it, I watch it like it's comedy. They're funny as fuck. Yeah, and it's I've, pretty great. And I feel like I've always been, you know, I've always been the goofy kid, the kind of funny guy. And I'm like, if I just be myself and then learn, like, everything, like, these guys, um, I, I think I'm going to be able to be pretty good at talking shit yeah. in, in my own way. And, and it's going to be, authentic because then you there's people can tell when you're being real your true self and like being funny and then people can tell when you're being like you know uh henry cejudo who just he's an olympic gold medalist he's you know two-time world champ he hasn't his following sucks yeah he's just not funny and it's there's well, he there's doesn't the, have that off stage his personality isn't as verbose really off stage yeah and he's just so i i think uh but yeah chael and, and connor i definitely watch a lot of a lot of their interviews and and probably subconsciously learned a lot to where I can kind of put it in my own ways. Yeah. It's fun, man, and it makes it fun. Dude, I love that part of it. I remember after I broke my foot, I told Joe Rogan, I said, I love, uh, what did I say? I said, I fucking love you, Joe Rogan, but I said, uh, I love everything about the sports, the trash talk, the the, the build-ups to the fights. Dude, those press conferences with, that Connor have been in with-, with uh, Oh, they were the, so good oh, with Floyd. Yeah. With Floyd, with with uh, Aldo, with when they were all sitting up there, and he's talking about the court. <laughs> dude. I can't wait for those. I'm gonna give me a fucking yeah. quad shot, <laughs> chug it, and just get goofy on the mic and start saying fucked up shit that people and look pushing all, the boundary. And the funny thing is, is already I want to watch that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like I want to watch. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's like what makes people want to watch. It's that it thing, but no one really kind of knows what that it thing is. But I said it on the Contender series when I was seven and oh or whatever i was before i fought alfred i said i have that it thing i'm gonna knock out alfred and everyone's gonna want to watch me fight and it just happened like that and it's funny that, that, that was a great do, fight do, too do, i thought do, man that, that fight was, a, was fuck that was a that was a wild one to watch man. yeah it was it was high paced and it was <sighs> but i was had that was the worst fight camp i've ever had in my life and it was the biggest opportunity i needed to go out there and perform and that's what really you know probably gave me a lot of confidence so i'm like i I had a bad concussion. This is the reason I don't spar too much. I had a bad concussion a couple weeks before that fight, waking up in the middle of the night, puking, not able to train, um, couldn't eat hardly. So I weighed in at 136. I got in the cage at 138. Mm. That's fucking insane. Like you don't get in the, you don't weigh in at 136, get in at 138. Um, it, it, and I just had such a bad camp. I was completely gassed out in that fight. You can see a minute in, I'm like <sighs> huffing and puffing. Um, and I still dropped him. So that made me really, that probably built a lot of my. It was oh, just GoPro battery. Scared down. the fuck out of me. <laughs> um, that, that probably gave me a lot of confidence knowing I can still show up when I feel like that. Yeah. Um, let's look at that picture of Tim too. Let's bring that back up. I don't want to. That know. was, yeah, he had a cameo on uh, Rip My Drip. 
Who sent that in, Our, Sugar? Zark, we have this boy. We have this guy on a, that's been following Tim and I for a long time. His name is Zark Poino. He's an OG Jobin of ours. And uh, he, he sent it in like four weeks in a row, he said. And he finally got it on, and, and it was legendary. You know I, what's funny, Theo, is when I had hair like you, I used to have, and I had like a little bit of frosted tips. I got more puss than I've ever got in my life. Oh, <laughs> praise God, brother. Amen to that. Holy hell. Yeah, you show up looking like you can do something, and people think you can. <laughs> this is oh. when you got your first tranny, right? Took out your first tranny oh, yeah. on Tinder? Don't, but don't. Oh, yeah, sorry. Bro, you could about fucking about alien dress like that, bro. <laughs> Anything could happen to yeah. you. What's in that fanny pack if we had a guess? Condoms. Bro, hopefully more fanny. Look Condoms. at the muscles on this dude. <laughs> no shit. Oh, just a Condoms and lube. <laughs> Extra Condoms. fanny, bro. Uh, uh, who's a using little, A little That's vibrator. That's an insane idea. Um, let's I, get that other question that came in. Uh, do you want, I want to kind of hear what you guys said about him back in the day. Oh, yeah, let's play this. Yeah, I didn't even know. Phoenix. Tim Welch. Wakata. Look at them fucking jorts, bro. <laughs> Dude, he kind of has that Joe Rogan of the of the West vibe. Huh? Dude, he has that Joe Rogan of the future vibe, doesn't he? Yeah. Look at those fucking bolets. It looks like Joe Rogan if he uh, if he was in that movie. Um, what's that movie where they where there's things climbing underground and they try to pop out and see you? Tremors. Tremors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's an old movie. He looks like uh, Joe Rogan if he's in Taxi Cab Confessions porno. Yeah, yeah it that. looks like Joe Rogan and uh, Hulk. Her, he looks like Hulk Hogan. That's what he looked like, dude. Dude, look at his kicks. Remember when Hulk Hogan's son killed somebody with a car? Fast, yeah, that's racing. crazy, man. Yeah, talking about Nick Hogan. Yeah, racism. He's an Uber driver now. Um, let's see oh, what damn. else do we got. Look at that fucking though. powerful yeah. fanny pack. You know, yeah, very powerful. And look at the time. Oh, oh, yeah. Bro, if somebody doesn't ejaculate onto that guy, yeah. bro, then we ain't. Fuck. This ain't America, dude. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what do you guys do whenever you guys go out around the town, man? Do you guys ever we don't go out? Really? We don't go out, dude. We train, we get high, we chill. That's it. Is it too dangerous going out whenever you can fight? Like, does it? Because I like, you know, I I can do comedy, so I like to go out and do yeah, comedy. Yeah. You know, like, is it kind of like, dangerous? Like, I might fuck you up. Yeah. No, I don't look at fighting like that at all. I'm never confrontational, and I don't get in fights outside of it. I I don't. I'm never even in that situation. Right. Um, if we go out, it's to, we'll, we'll get fucking high shit and go overeat and regret it. That's yeah. pretty much like a, what we do. Yeah. And we don't, <clears throat> we did go to a comedy place down in Phoenix. I, I'd like to go down there more because being around the comedy club, that was pretty fucking fun. We never really, don't, I only hear Rogan talk about it and you guys talk about being around the club, comedy club. I'm like, damn, that sounds fucking, that sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. That stand up live club. Is that the one? Yeah. What's it called? Do you remember? Stand up mm -hmm. Scottsdale. Is that what it is? There's a couple good ones. It's not in Scottsdale. It's in Phoenix, right? Is it downtown? Yeah, Phoenix? downtown. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, stand up live. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Brendan and them were just over there, actually. I oh, think, is that where they perform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they were there, actually, Damn. maybe a weekend. Or maybe. Last night, I think, or two nights ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's where they were. Let's get this question in. Hello. Louisiana. You all right, Sean? As a fellow Louisiana nerd, big fan of the podcast in general all fucking 10 of them that you do and um just wanted to got a quick question for sean and that's um after you get that belt what are you telling joe in that post fight interview what are you gonna tell him uh i don't i really still don't know what podcast is for so gangrene butt fuck whatever <laughs> <laughs> not even sure half the words he said but that was <laughs> I don't think that guy Something knows he's like, from Louisiana he said uh, so God, it's limited bro limited word ship down there yeah after <laughs> that's after, why he had his buddy with him to help him <laughs> in case he needed an extra word holding the sign yeah. <laughs> uh, after my fight with Andre I remember saying I fucking love you Joe Rogan and then I fought with Jose I was on ESPN they're like don't go so I was like I freaking love you Joe Rogan <laughs> and then after that pay per view I fought. so I think that's kind of became a thing just saying I fucking yeah, love you, Joe. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, such a huge fan of Joe Rogan. It's fucking, it's so sweet that he's a commentator there. Like in the UFC, they said, hey, how are you going to, how are you going to, uh, how's it going to affect you fighting with no crowd? I said, if Joe Rogan and, is there and Dana White's there, I don't give a fuck who else oh, there. Joe Rogan, listening to him commentate in, in his podcast, it's, I'll probably say I fucking love you, Joe Rogan, after yeah. I get that belt. <laughs> That'd be a great t-shirt if you made that too. I fucking love you, Joe Rogan. Oh, hey, hey Rogan, you mind? You mind if I use that? Like, give me ten bucks. Little wife sure. beater or something. Little wife beater. Yeah. yeah. He made that Spotify money, I think. Or ex wife right. beater, dude. The Ooh. wife beater. Yeah. Future wife beater. Yeah. Hey. Future wife beater. <laughs> the great idea. Like a rash card cut off wife beater. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sweet. Um, what else we got, Nick? Anything you want to ask, man? This guy's got a question. Oh, he's got a good question. I can okay. tell. Here we go. 
a lot of our questions, they have their shirts off. I don't know what it is, but people right. are fired up. Man. Yeah, <laughs> they're doing. You got them push-ups. Sean, what is your favorite tattoo? Um, probably the probably something on my face. I remember when I went. I wanted to get face tattoo Danny, my girl. She's like, nah, don't do it. And it was the star in it. I, I said, I'm stupid enough to get a face tattoo, but I was smart enough to get a fake one first. Right. So I got the fake star tattoo before my fight with Andre. And it was, I'm like, damn, I like that. So so I went and got the star. I was feeling like a fucking superstar. Yeah. That was, I was on a pay-per-view. I'm in the UFC. I was 22 years old. I'm like, fuck, I'm getting a star on my face. I ain't going to ever work a fucking job again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So probably the star, that's what started the, the face tattoos. And then I got then I got sugar. And then I got breathe. It, it says breathe when you look in the mirror. Uh-huh. Um, that one was pretty cool because I was going through that, all that USADA stuff. I was really learning more about my breath and, and meditation and stoicism. And it all comes back to just taking that, just breathing and feeling that breath. So I got that one. I like that one a lot. And then I got the heart. The heart was just kind of like, I don't, I just want something on my face. I'm yeah, like man. Heart. I was feeling hard. Yeah. Do what you got to do. Yeah. That's it's how interesting because, out. I mean, back in the, like, I mean, tattoos and stuff, I don't have any, but it's always You'd been look like sick a sick with a little face tat. Tribal thing, really? Yeah. A little hot dog Some, or something. A little, <laughs> a little hot dog. <laughs> no, but something, something small would be sick. Damn. Bro. I think you got to, even if you get like a little fake one first, just to check it out. Yeah. You'd like it. You'd look in the mirror and you just, oh, I scream i do every morning do you yeah i just feel hard because you're like fuck i have to show up now that i have face tattoos <sighs> well dude. after that yeah you can't get face <laughs> tattoos and <laughs> not show up before for life. my fight before my fight i'm like i got fucking crazy hair if i get knocked out that's gonna be fucking a meme forever oh, yeah, laying yeah. there with my hair flopping around <laughs> yeah colorful um has connor reached out to you have no you i feel like no I, i'm a huge fan of connor obviously but i feel like he I feel like he might be a little bit of a drunk now. Yeah. I'm not, who knows? Maybe not. But I feel like he probably looks at me like, this little fucker is about to steal all my shine. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I am I heard Brendan t talk, what, what was it? Saying about the new super, uh, the new pay-per-view model. He doesn't think anybody's going to be like that big superstar, that Connor, that Ronda, that, J I think he's wrong. I think I'm going to be that next big fucking superstar, but I just have to make sure I'm continuing to show up in the gym and get better so i can go out there and perform but if i keep going out there and doing what i know i'm capable of doing like a lot of people don't think in their mind like i'm gonna go knock this dude out in a fucking flashy way i yeah. said before that fight i'm gonna knock this dude out in a viral way and i did and i feel like i can do that to everybody it doesn't matter what style if i'm longer than you and faster than you i can knock you out in, in a crazy fashion it's artistic yeah it's like pablo like kick ass -o or something yeah exactly you know? pablo kick -ass i might get that tattooed on my face <laughs> <laughs> bro that's uh, mine dog it would, next time you come it, 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 across it would look good something would be or sweet. colin we just hired colin maybe we'll make him get it <laughs> oh that'd, that'd be good yeah, yeah. but no Dude, i yeah. would it be so gangster one day to have somebody who you have to like you don't want to have the tattoos but you make them that get would them? be sweet <laughs> yeah. that would be cool <laughs> Jay, that's you. Let's go, boy. Yeah, this is my tattoo donkey right here. <laughs> it says menthol across his back. <laughs> it's like, what's even going He's on buzzed here? up, <laughs> getting tats. Do you get buzzed up much? Uh, get fucked up. You mean? Just buzz, yeah. Every or night. Drunk. Not recently. I, I got. I, I quit oh, doing yeah. drugs and right. alcohol a while back. But I'll probably do it at some point. Just yeah. not right now. Yeah, I don't. What about DMT? Have you ever done that? I haven't, but I'm definitely. I definitely would like to. I, I like how it's a quick kind of. I've been. Told yeah, like yeah, so you can just minutes, walk like, through it whoa. pretty easy, yeah. Um, I, I definitely would, would be interested in doing that. But uh, getting buzzed up, it, it's so fun when you do it, but we don't do it very often. couple times a year, three, four, maybe a get year. Drunk? Yeah. Yeah. But it, like when we get buzzed with the boys, it's so much fucking fun. It's just hard to... Like, I don't want to wake up the next morning with a fucking headache. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of becoming old fashioned too, I think. Like when I was uh in college, like everybody got drunk, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, How drunk can you get? <laughs> Zach's dead. Yeah. You know, it would be <laughs> like it was like, Oh man, like he who, who cares if he's dead? He can still drink, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it yeah. just got but now like you that. see people using more psychedelics. You see people yeah. using more like things that they want to have like an actual experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they wanna just Pol kind of pollute themselves mm -hmm. you know i yeah. think it, it's just like everything every like diet changes i think the diet of how we get wasted yeah uh is evolving as well you know fuck yeah this was kind of related this question what's up sean what's up theo gang gang brother uh my name is tour from gang. sydney australia 
Um, I just have a question for Sean. I was just wondering if you microdose anything. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it at all, but um, there are huge benefits with it. And I know that you've just, uh, I saw you on Joe Rogan's podcast speaking about um, mushrooms. So I was just wondering if you microdose at all. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. It's cool how many different people around the world Isn't it amazing, listen bro? to the podcast and stuff. Like when I go on Twitch, people are like, hey, from Germany, hey, from Russia. It's fucking crazy. It's pretty, dude, it's fa- It's really fascinating, isn't it? It is. Um, microdosing, I feel like for me, when I use a psychedelic, I feel like I have to almost be kind of called to them and be like, I'm going through something and I need to figure it out. Lately, life's been so just going so well right now mm-hmm. that I'm, I haven't really felt like I needed to use mushrooms. Um, or any psychedelics really, but I have microdosed and, and it does, it makes it life more vibrant almost. And if you're in a, you gotta be careful if you're in a, what kind of mindset you're in. Um, but if I'm going through something, I need to have fucking figure something out. I feel like and dig deep where it's like, okay, this is coming from my childhood or this is coming from this insecurity or you're attached to to your significant other and you get jealous in a certain way like that's when i feel like those mushrooms are so beneficial and so powerful they can really help you dig deeper into those situations and uh figure out what's the next step because mushrooms aren't going to fix nothing they're not you're not going to take mushrooms like oh i I feel better now yeah it's going to give you the right idea to be like oh shit this is where i'm going wrong this is what I need to change. Right, yeah, you get, yeah. it helps you get out of the, some of those bad loops you can mm-hmm. get in. Exactly, yeah. So I think mushrooms are so fucking powerful. It's crazy, huh? It's crazy that the, the, they're illegal. It makes Miller Lite look like a little pussy, Exa- dude. <laughs> exactly. I, I think, you know, Tim said it should be a national mushroom day where everybody yeah. just kind of trips and, and, and realizes we're all fucking one. Like at the end of the day, we're all one motherfucker. Yeah, bro. Everybody just gets in a big pile in the and park. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stacked yeah. up, protest. But, style. dude, how crazy would it be to do them like with your mom or something? I've always thought dude, about that. My mom. My mom's starting to get a little weird, bro. I think she would, in a couple of years, dude, I take a weekend off of uh, not partying and I just go do them with my mom. Dude, I think that would be an emotional, such a positive thing for, for me and my mom, too. But my mom is so against, she's religious to where she she wouldn't do it. Right. Because of the Bible and all that. But I'm like, if you read the Bible, doesn't it say stuff about plants and medicines and stuff? But she thinks, she she literally told me the other day, marijuana, no, 20 cigarettes is worse than one joint. I thought on the internet. I've heard that before. I'm like, mom, you smoke 20 cigarettes, I'll smoke a joint, let's get on the treadmill (laughs) and see who falls first. (laughs) Or let's do anything, anything. And uh, but she's just so cut off at that religious block. There's I just don't see her. But she used to. She's she's such a good fucking person, and I love her to death. But I think she's just stuck on that block. That marijuana is so bad for you. Yeah. But I don't know why. I'm like I've seen you drunk. Like I've seen you drink caffeine. Coffee's literally opposite of weed in a sense. Like. Yeah, I don't get it. Has she? You think she's ever tried it? I don't think she's ever tried it. No. See, that's the thing. I think is if getting someone and have the experience because I think they feel like you smoke a joint, you lose your job, you get like a shitty car, your air conditioner doesn't work, <laughs> you cry in your yard. Yeah. You know what I'm so, saying? You yeah. suddenly have two kids in the backyard, <laughs> yeah. and the fucking there's a shitty pool that they're in. Like Dude. I think people. That's what people think. Like oh, that happens. <laughs> I can see my mom. I don't think they that. realize. Oh, it just kind of makes you a little different you know it makes the whole way you interact with the world it puts a different filter yeah. on it i think well I th- and i think coffee is the same thing caffeine is l- a drug that makes you fucking before i had caffeine today i was like when i had caffeine yeah. i'm like whoa let's fucking get goofy <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it changes your mind it's all yeah. mind altering just like weed is and let's call a darren till a piece of shit you know what i'm saying let's fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm not stupid let's i can talk shit, shit to those guys bro. like i don't like when littler guys talk shit to the big ufc the big guys like i'm a 35 i'm not a big guy i'm a little guy i'm not talking shit to these big ass motherfuckers i'm smart enough to know that these guys can still whoop my ass <laughs> yeah, right, right right and then i that's why i don't like when the little guys act like they're the king of the world even when connor's like there's not a man but that might be him playing that up that right. like that thing where people are like i want to watch out but it's gotten so much easier for him to play it up it's almost like that's become his only element since he doesn't fight anymore yeah i don't it sucks because you almost get put in this position to where it's like for connor it's like i need big fucking fights i'm not gonna fight anyone else and, and he seems like like he's getting frustrated. He wants to fight, but he only has so many options now. Right. And that's the thing with getting up in the rankings. Like, so you're ranked number five. It's like, 
oh, okay, I can fight number four, three, two, one, or the champ. But these guys are fighting each other. This guy's injured. This guy's fucking mom has cancer. This guy, you know, he's just right. like, there's, you, can't, you can't fight. Sir. And time goes fast. I mean, before you know it, That's it's been a saying. year. It's been a year and a half. So it's like almost the rank, it's like, fuck. Once you get up there, it's like you can only fight a certain amount of guys. Right. Because you don't want to fight backwards. It's just, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't make sense. But so you got to enjoy the ride. So you have to plan the ride. <laughs> you do. And I and, and for me it's like I love fighting. If if they get, if it was my choice, I'd fight next weekend. Yeah, I would have had a fight booked, and we're fighting. But it like I said, it's a business, and they gotta do it right. But yeah, fighting's fucking, and it's a dangerous sport. Like I'm lucky I got out of the last two fights, no injuries. That's rare. Yeah, it's super rare to get out of fights with no injuries back to back like that. Have you ever fought somebody that only has one eye or not? One eye. Um, like or somebody that only had like one, one. something. No, I remember there was this guy that I sent to Tim that I got offered a fight. Remember that? And you're like, he has one leg. I'm like, dude, it's a lose lose. <laughs> it's a lose lose. You beat him. Really? You beat a guy with one oh, leg. Oh, dude, in Montana, you can fucking fight every weekend. That's the thing. That's what I used yeah. to love that Sugar used to say as a when he was amateur. He's like, man, I don't even give a shit if I lose. I just want to do some sweet shit. I was like, <laughs> I didn't hell yeah. Fuck. I, I was just like, lucky. if I can make a highlight, if I can go into a fight and get like a good solid bunch of sweet shit like that I did in the fight and then lose, like, at least got sweet vids to it's watch. It's true, bro. The highlights, bro. It's like I, max preps. It's dude, like as long as you have a couple of good exactly. highlights, dude, the rest yeah. of it doesn't matter. This guy's exactly. 0 and 74, dude. Exactly. But he oh, shows up. Yeah, but watch him do this backflip. <laughs> yeah. the, the thing about having, being undefeated, too, I'm 12 and 0. It's like, fuck. That O is so uh, important in the business, too. It's like, it's almost like, okay, if I lose, then it's like, okay, now we're free to fight whoever. Fuck it. But you got to keep that O. You got to keep that undefeated record. Yeah. Um, Does that? Do, do you think about that a lot? Uh, for me i think another thing that's super that i have an advantage of in the mental department is i'm not afraid to lose when i look at losing i look at it as a, ch a chance to go through adversity a chance to be like when i when that whole usada thing came about it's like that was so i felt like i just took a l i just lost like i just got suspended for something i didn't fucking do right but i, I was able to figure out how to make it a positive thing training wise my relationships wise just learning a lot about myself. So if I lose a fight, I'm like, okay, now we just got some shit to deal with mentally. Obviously, I need to go work on something. Did I get caught? Did I get dropped? Did I lose a decision? What Did I gas out? What happened? I got to go work on that. And then mentally, it's like, okay, how do I deal with this loss? And I'm going to be able to deal with it because I've dealt with shit before. And I know that dealing with adversity come out m more powerful on the other side. So I'm really not scared to lose. I definitely obviously don't want to, but God, I hope I lose next fight. It'll be sick. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to lose and going into a fight. If I do lose, my circle's so small that I'm not going to have people fl flailing. Like Tim's going to be there. Jay's going to be there. My girl's going to be there. My mom and dad are uh, the core, the small group I got, the guys at the gym at TW, BJJ, where we train. Like those guys fucking love me in there. Not because I'm winning fights, because I'm they're a fan of, of what I do in the and I entertain, and then I go to the gym and I'm like, "What's up, guys?" Like, I'm just, so I'm not gonna lose anybody that's important. Right. To me the I only lose. thing you're gonna lose is just yeah, it, it would fight. just be a it's fight. Not that big deal. Um. So I think being able to look at it with that mindset helps me go into not be getting nervous in fights. Like, it's interesting, man. It definitely after watching like interviews with you and then talking with you now, it definitely gives me a, a more of an understanding of what kind of your your overall perspective of things is is definitely a little bit different. That's good. Yeah, it's sweet being able to do podcasts like this and get asked different questions and reach different audiences and have under podcasts are sweet because you you really get an understanding of what of who someone is for the most part and you can kind of tell if they're bullshitting or if they're being themselves or whatever. So yeah, it's fucking podcasting so fun. Yeah, yeah, it's been awesome, man. Um, Nick, what else we got? Anything else? Uh, I guess just more specifically, do you have a timeline of when you're trying to fight again? Yeah, the, I'm talking to UFC. I texted Sean Shelby yesterday. I said, dude, I'm ready to go in August. Like, I know, I, I don't think, I, Fight Island sounds really cool. I don't but, think it does. <laughs> but when, like I, a shit hole. when I get there and I'm like, this place fucking, <laughs> even if it is sweet, it's like, okay, being, I, I could either fight. The thing is, too, is the cage size. Like, the cage is, f what was it, 44% smaller? Mm -hmm. Almost half the size. No way. Yeah. For, on Fight Island? No, 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 in, in Vegas. Yeah, that's what they said, right? This past weekend, the, the, that cage was smaller. Yeah, the one I fought in was fucking tiny, and I felt it. But that's the one I fought oh. in the Contender Series, too. And it's like, for me, my advantage is my footwork and my movement. So the bigger the cage, the better for me. 
Um, so Fight Island's gonna have a big cage. Vegas has a smaller cage, but I'd way rather fight in Vegas. But I'd rather fight in a bigger big cage. cage. So it's like, okay, who are we fighting? Are we fighting a grappler who's gonna try to hold me down. That smaller cage is, is gonna benefit them more. Are we fighting a striker in a smaller cage. I'd still would rather have a bigger cage, but it's different. It's a different game. Like Eddie was a striker. It was wasn't too big of an issue. Um, so I'd rather fight in Vegas in a bigger cage if I had the opportunity. Hopefully we're gonna fight August. A couple people like. Um, I was supposed to fight Cheeto. I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, Cheeto, <coughs> his fight was sick. Well, he Song. lost, but it was a. I thought he, he won. won. He oh. won. Oh, he won. He lost. I thought he won. He did lose. Mm-hmm. Oh, he lost. He lost the decision. Cheeto I thought, Vera, right? Is that yeah, his yeah. name? Yeah. I, th- I thought he won. I thought he won he, too. That's how crazy it well, was. That's, well, see, that's what I told UFC too. I'm like, I'm, I'll fight him. I know he's coming off a loss, and you're supposed to winners fight winners. UFC thought he won. I thought he won. You know that could be a fight to make. Damn, yeah, that'd be a great fight, bro. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> Or it's gonna be another first round KO, but no, he, he's definitely <laughs> tough as fuck. He's like he's tough. He's gonna yeah. yeah. And I always say this: <clears throat> I plan on fighting for 15 minutes. As far as when my training is concerned, like we're training to mm-hmm. fucking fight for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, like throughout my career, it doesn't last Couple like minutes, that. Yeah. And I don't, you know, when I close my eyes and see the fight playing out. I knock him out in the first round. It just <laughs> yeah. happens like that. <laughs> but he, he's tough. <laughs> His skill set's pretty high, pretty good. He's, he's a good grappler. I think he would try to take me down. Not initially. I think he's like, he, initially he'll probably be like, oh, I'll strike with him. Hit him with a fucking sugar smack. And then huh? I smack him in the tits <laughs> and he's like, oh, trying to grab me. That's what usually happens. Is I hit people. fucking stevia, bro. Dude, I might hit him with that <laughs> fucking stevia. <laughs> yeah, fucking that. But he, I think he called me Stevie on Twitter the other day. Oh, did he really? He's, oh, I didn't even he know He said that. something about making excuses when the UFC. People on Twitter are so fucking <laughs> stupid. Like, it, it's funny. I like Twitter now. I don't use it too much. I use it to talk shit. Like, Peter, I don't know if you saw that tweet. Uh, no, I didn't see he it. Peter Yan. Uh, Peter Yan. He said, uh, oh, yeah, there's that. Next time UFC called, don't make excuses. Like, UFC called me. I'm like, <laughs> no, I can't make it. My, my grandma's couch broke. And I'm like, I can't make it. I made an excuse. But, uh. I think, it, what did he say? He said, um, it's my time. And I said, calm down, Peter. Or no, I said, calm down. You can't even spell your name right, Peter, or something <laughs> like that. You are. And it's just funny little comments like that. Right there, he said, my time. And I said, calm down. You can't even spell your name right, Peter. And then I spelled <laughs> it right. And uh, and then he said something. He said, oh, yeah, it's calm down. You can't even spell your name right, Peter. Just some funny shit like that on Twitter makes Twitter so fucking fun. Because it's a game. Well, it's interesting, too, for you because you see, coming out of, like, this Twitch world and mm-hmm. being in, like, and being of a younger generation than some guy, you know, like, just thing. it's it's more of a not real world online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's building potential big fights in the future. Like, that's building it up. You're not working for me now, curly boy. Yeah, I don't know if he speaks English or if he has someone's <laughs> translating. I, I I truly don't know, but uh, I, I makes I'm curious if he's actually him. I don't think he could speak that way. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, he probably got his own style, man. But it's funny people always try to uh, uh, jab at me for having curly hair. I'm like, curly hair is the only reason I get laid. Yeah, <laughs> You're like dude, that's not an insult. You got fucking curly hair, but yeah, well, I got laid with it, so yeah, it's not a good insult. I think. Uh, Oh, a lot Henry of Henry Cejudo said something about curly Q or something during Q tip mm-hmm. or something about my hair. I'm like, God, you can't. That's not good because it gets. But me it's pussy. interesting that at where you're at, that you have these guys who who are are, ta- are communicating with you. Oh, you know I what I'm it. saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's like the top top. There's guys. a lot of guys who could tweet at Henry Cejudo and they're not going to get any response. <laughs> but that's not where you live right now. That's no. not the. That's not the. You know the the world you have built for yourself yeah. right now. And uh, and I've been, and I bet it is fucking exciting. It's fun. It makes it way more exciting. And I've been building this up for, you know, I've been building my social media up for a long time, you know, ever since I guess I got it. Kind of just been building it up, building it up, building it up, making it like a business. Yeah. You know, you can make, like, I make a lot of fucking money from my Instagram. And it's like a business there. But growing up, I I had so many adults tell me, don't post this. Don't post that. You're not, UFC not going to like that. Me smoking weed uh, in my fucking marijuana robe, listening to 50 Cent. Like, hey, I wouldn't post that. UFC not going to like Literally been adults that I'm supposed to look up to. It's so hard for me to look up to most adults. I'm like, 
your life sucks. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what you tell me doesn't really resonate. Yeah. You just got fired. Yeah. yeah. You just got fired from the you, fire department. You, yeah. It's, <laughs> so it's like hard for me when I was growing up listening to the adults, like, I don't want to be like you. So that's probably not going to, not going to listen. I've always kind of been a rebel in that way, but I've been like the social media way posting shit that I think is funny. Yeah. Like if I think it's fucking funny, I'm going to post it. Dude, undeniable that, that the show is entertaining, man. A rebel with a cause. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Anything else? That's it for me. You got? Tim, man, you got That's anything it. else for this I guy? Want, I want to see. Okay, besides Schwab and Joe Rogan, I think with your size, you might be able to fuck up any other comedian. Oh, dude. What about Callen? You versus Callen? He boxes a little bit. I see. I'm I think, getting a little old, though. That's true. I'm actually going to stop by Tony Jeffrey's gym on the way home. He's got that box and burn. Uh, hit some mitts or what yeah I'm gonna just gonna yeah. check it out I'm gonna get a membership over there that'd be That'd tight, be tight. Um, I wanna I'm I need to fight somebody I think you versus Brian sparring three threes would be fucking epic I'd watch that I'd be in it I mean dude, <laughs> yeah I'd um, watch that dude, your size intimidated me you're I don't think fucking, people know yeah you're taller you're like and I can get hit man I'm already well you got a mullet so you can get yeah, you, yeah. That, that, I'll get fucking you can get hit dude yeah you get grimy. shit yeah but I'm I think already jab, missing a little wow, if you can jab Brian cause I haven't met Brian either so I don't know He's small. No. He's small. Smaller. He's quick in his hip, so he's got those kind of that. I can yeah, see that. He's got that wiggle in him. Yeah, I can see that. I but see he's that. very small. He's almost like he is the vi- the physique of like Elf on a Shelf. Remember Elf on a Shelf? Oh yeah, I know Elf on a Shelf. I can see Brian. Yeah, okay. He has but that small that. physique, almost like somebody yeah. set him somewhere. Elf on the Shelf with traps, so he does have nice. Does nice, he have nice traps? traps. He's, he's, yeah, but his yeah. muscle, his bone density, has gone down so much even in the past year. Yeah, yeah, he's it happens quick. Older. You think you'll be like tactical or more on your Scrappy. emotions? Like I'd go in mouth first. Yeah, I'd be one of the few people to fucking yeah go in. Get emotional. Oh, no, have bro. someone slap you in the rap Just squealing before the fight. My finishing move is I fucking hold him down. Damn. Uh, in a boxing and I fight. cry straight into his mouth. In a boxing <laughs> fight, that'd be sick. Just drown him, bro. That'd be sick. That'd be fucking epic. Dude, you gotta think of some crazy finishing moves, bro. Dude, I have some. Mm. I really do. Like we got things so that have never many. been done. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I do that. I, I do. I have moves that have never been that people are gonna be like, what? think I'm not real. Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal. People, mm. I get in fights. People are like. <laughs> was that real? I want to be a, that big of a character. And we got the moves. I have this, the the techniques down. Yeah, like this guy's using R3, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be very interesting what he's doing. The UFC game ain't going to be able to keep up with the shit that I actually can do. So it's going to be sweet. I'm, I'm excited. To, uh, it's nice to be healthy. Right. Like really feel healthy because with that strength and conditioning program I'm doing, I'm doing that and building that dense bones and I'm just eating healthy. So I, my body's so healthy. And when I'm healthy and athletic like this, mm-hmm. I'm a dangerous motherfucker. And I have so many sweet moves to finish people with. And you got to remember, I'm almost, I'm 5'11". And most of the guys in the UFC, in my division are 5'7", five, 5'6", five, like little dudes. Yeah, no, you that length, it almost makes me, when I'm watching you, it makes me nervous. Yeah. For some reason, because I'm like, oh, because the visual is that, oh, this guy looks... You know, like the who was the the gentleman who's Stamen Stamen? Oh, Cody, Cody Stamen. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you look at him, you're like Jesus Christ. But so he's closer to five foot than he is six wow. foot. You know what I mean? So does that scare you though when you see somebody with that body, like that physique? Does it it's just like. <laughs> I mean, if it, no, it's funny. It's more <laughs> funny than it is scary. Well, when you see a midget, you get scared. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a midget. He's 5'3". He's not a midget. That's true, that's true, that's true. <laughs> that's true, man. You're right. You're it's right, not right. scary. No, no. When they're jacked like that, it's like, okay, he's going to try to take me down and hold me. It's right. not scary. Um, thinking like that because they got to get inside. Got to get knee, elbowed, kicked, teeped. There's a lot of weapons. A lot of, a lot, like, it's dangerous coming in to my range. A lot of blades, bro. A lot of blades. A lot of blades this guy's yeah. running with. Yeah. Uh, Sean O'Malley, the Dude. Sugar Show. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. Thanks that for coming fun. in, bro. Yeah, thanks. It's exciting, you. man. Tim, thank you so much. Fuck yeah, good to meet you guys. Yeah, and you, uh, JX. JX, man. Jesus, you can call him Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And he does most of your social media stuff. He- yep, Jesus does our podcast, vlogs, uh, runs our Patreon for the most part, like posting on stuff. So legendary. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. having that stuff going is so huge, bro. Fuck yeah! You know, a lot of people don't have that. Mm-hmm. No. So thinking ahead yeah. like that, bro. We're on, we're on top of it. We got the, we got the squad on top of everything. Yeah, that's huge, man. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's.
gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine. 